Hello! What's up, guys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thankfully I didn't forget how to type. Alright, what did I miss? Hey, Canon, thanks for 38 months. What's up, what's up? Morning, sunshine. I've seen some great pictures of Team Blonde. Looks like TC was a nice time. It was a nice time. It was great. Hey, Andy, what's up? You back home and safe? Thanks for 17 months, Cal, and for the 18 months, Wheatley. Thank you so much, guys. Hey, Bishu, thanks for the 22 months. My very own artist. <laughs> Makes didn't adopt us. <laughs> wow, I can't believe makes didn't adopt us. What the hell? <laughs> Thanks for the 53 months, Osaka. Hello. Mm -mm. Yes, oh. <laughs> I wanted to look for Spotify and I looked for a Bishu on my PC. I did not find Bishu. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not a program. Sure, it would be a great program if it would exist, though. Hey, Tom, what's up? Airport was not fun, but how uh, well did the airport? Oh my goodness. The airport was something else. Dude, I actually cannot believe what happened at that airport. Like, we knew it's gonna be bad, so we arrived really early. We arrived four hours before our flight. And it was like, we waited in line for three hours to get through security. It was, you know, like there were some, some like checkpoints in the queue where you thought, oh, we're going to be there soon. And then it was really just another hour or something. <laughs> it was crazy. Like the whole, the queue started inside, wrapped around, then you had to go outside go all the way through like a tent, come all the way back, then inside again, and then upstairs. And it was like, it was insane. So three hours uh, of waiting in the queue. They even had to give you like food and water in the queue. And they had to put a, um, like an outside like toilet there as well. Because you were waiting in queue for so long, they had to like give you stuff so you don't die on your way, you know? <laughs> It's like, here, have some uh, stroop waffles and some water. <laughs> hey, Emma, what's up? Yeah, I the, the trip was pretty bad. Like, the airport was really bad. <laughs> but other than that, it was fine. Also, it was so hot in Verona. Holy Jesus. <laughs> like, we stepped out of the airplane in Verona and we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> I queued up for two hours to find out I was queuing in the wrong place. Oh no, seriously, and had to go and do it again. <laughs> oh my god, seriously. <laughs> oh no. I begged Steph to take me straight to security. I made a flight with one minute to spare. Oh shit, well, I'm glad you still made it though. Oh, thank god. <laughs> Her occasion to say hello to Fired Up in the stream. Poor homie's still awake. Fired Up is still awake now. Well, that's a nice demon schedule. <laughs> my eyes feel fine. I still have dry eyes and I still don't see my PC screen properly though. Because of the lights, I guess. It is what it is. I did not get all of my accounts back. Oh my god. Like, I lost my phone on the very first day there and it was just like, oh. 
The worst part about losing the phone, though, was... Well, I couldn't log into any of my accounts, which sucked, obviously. Like, I couldn't post anything on Instagram or Twitter or Discord or anything. Uh, so that sucked, obviously. But <laughs> I also had recorded a vlog about my last week. And I also re wanted to record a vlog for, um, like, for actual TwitchCon. Like, I actually recorded stuff on my way there, in the airport, in the car, blah, blah, blah. And all of those videos are obviously gone. So it's like, yeah, that sucked. Guess we're not gonna get a vlog for the last surgery. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry, but the footage is just gone. What can I do? <laughs> thank you so much for 58 months yes. Yeah, what's up? Thank you, thank you, thank you. But it is what it is. So today I went to um, the Vodafone store so they can give me my, cause you can get a SIM card with the same number, right? So I got there, I said, hey, I would like a SIM card. And they, first of all, it took them forever to figure it out, which was like, whatever, I guess. And then I, cause this was, like not here, like I don't have a Vodafone store here, so I had to drive there uh, for like 15, 20 minutes, right? And then we drove all the way back and now I realize that they gave me the wrong SIM card? Like it's basically, it's not the wrong SIM card, but it's not like a nano SIM card. Like they gave me the, the big SIM card that can be um, used, like the smaller version of it as well, but only the micro version. Because you have like the big version, micro version and nano version, right? And the SIM card that they gave me only has the big one and the micro version. There's no nano version of it. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? I think you can actually just cut it yourself. Um, but I'm scared that I'm like gonna break it and then it's fucked. <laughs> thank you so much for 16 months, kiss, and I appreciate that. And thank you so much for Hype Train. I got a cutie mode. Hey, Brian, what's up? How are you? I think we all got the corona, bro. Oh shit, you sick, Brian? Like, I'm not sure if I have COVID, but I have like a little bit of a headache, like this like very like slight headache. And the last time I had COVID, I had that same headache or like a similar one. So I was thinking maybe, like it is possible. Joker and his girlfriend got the stuffed nose. It's also possible that we all just got the, uh... cause usually when, when gamers meet up, You'd get like the germs from like all over the world and you they're all in the same place. So sometimes you just get normal sick. It doesn't have to be COVID technically. It could be like, you know, it's called con flu. Yeah. <laughs> so it could be that. <laughs> I did meet Annie. Annie is so nice. Dude, I love Annie so much. She's the nicest. Thanks for 23 months, Max. What's up? Hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, I have to move this alert. It's like in the middle of my face. Somebody sub right now so I can test. Actually, I can just do this. <laughs> there you go. Better. <laughs> hey, Jagger, what's up? So, Emma, is, uh, is Lovely still in Utrecht today? Did you guys do something or was that yesterday? All right, Brian. I'm excited to hear the story. <laughs> what kind of phones even use micro sim? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Who the hell uses micro sims? So you wait. I'm googling this right now. Can you actually cut a micro sim into a nano sim without it being like dangerous? Can I cut a micro sim into nano sim? The thing is, the nano sims they're like. Like, so close to the actual chip. And I'm scared. I'm checking this out. What's up, guys? Now. Lou here. And today I'm going to be showing you how to cut a SIM card. I've done oh, this a couple of screen. times in the past. And you guys have requested this kind of a video to show you exactly how it's done. In this case, I'll be taking a standard SIM and cutting it down to nano SIM form factor for the iPhone 5. But the process would be the same if you wanted to go down to a micro SIM size for previous iPhones or other phones that are on okay, the like I said before, to. which I've got over here in order to really kitchen scissors ahead and draw like 
it will require cutting very close or even in this case <gasps> a little bit over top of the metal contacts you do need to be pretty Maybe careful to get a nice it. straight cut across those areas in order as i said before to get that precise fit so i've taped down this sim card i'm going to remove it from the tape now and then i'll go ahead and make wait my precision uh, this sounds cuts. complicated how did you get the lines and stuff thanks for the 43 months feature what's up and these lines here one so longer and short if you don't mess it just... prior to making your cut mm. you want to have lines on the card in order to guide your cuts so that you don't mess it up you need to get the exact fit for it you to work to in the sim paper. card tray on the print template ah why is this an airport thing <laughs> i'm sorry what Airports? Why did you just get an airport website? <laughs> what? Excuse me? This website? I I'm being scammed. Uh... <laughs> Dude, I, I, got, I got a virus now. I'm being scammed. I don't believe they're in the words it would like today, but they decided to stop by the beach first. All right, what is 38 degrees? I'll never see them again. <laughs> yeah, that might be, yeah, very likely. <laughs> you have a new phone, right? You can't use the digital SIM card. What the hell is a digital SIM card? Oh shit, that's a thing. But I already have the SIM card itself. Can I turn a normal SIM card into an eSIM card? Or is it like not, like, you know? eSIM. eSIM. eSIM Vodafone. Well, there's a QR code. Okay, oh no. Can I get this website in English? <laughs> this looks very Italian to me. But don't I have to like pay for this like separately? Like if I already have a physical SIM card now, can I like turn it into an eSIM? Really, Arcadis? Ooh, I'm doing this right now. Oh my God, Twitch said you're the best. What would I do without you? Let me get the SIM card thing. Also, have you seen I have, I finally got my PC. Look at this huge box. I haven't unpacked it yet though. <laughs> Cause I mean, I'm gonna have to figure out my phone stuff first. <laughs> and then we can set up this PC cause uh, there's a lot of things to set up. I am. So I have my SIM card here. I download an app. Okay, wait. Yeah, let's see you. So you're telling me there's a Vodafone like app. Vodafone eSIM.
It says I have to buy the eSIM e in, in, a, in a store. Or online. And there's supposed to be a QR code in it. Yeah, this is just a normal sim, the thing that I bought. Yeah, I don't think this works, guys. Like, I mean, I'm sure it works, but I already bought the normal sim. And it doesn't come with a QR code or something. And it's just called sim, Vodafone sim. Brian. <laughs> yeah, I think this doesn't work, guys. I'm gonna have to cut the SIM card. I'm cutting the SIM card right now. Cut micro SIM into nano SIM. Guys. This is gonna be great. Cutting guide. Oh my god. Equipment. Ruler, tape, good quality scissors, <laughs> nail file, permanent felt tip marker pen, measure side rulers and guides. Ah. Okay, I have to print this first. Wait. I'm printing this. I think my printer is out of colored ink. Actually, it might be out of black ink. Hmm, that's a problem. Oh, I can turn this into not black. Wait, that's a thing, right? I think you can turn like a PDF into a non-black version of it. I think that's a possibility. Yeah? Paper out. No, there is paper. Oh my god. Okay, it took 10 pieces of paper instead of one. <laughs> um, yeah, it is a thing. You can turn a PDF into different colors. It's like a converter or something. Wait, let me see. It's called... Uh, I had bookmarked this somewhere. There. It's called supertool.org. Change PDF colors. I'll show you. You first need to find the PDF. What was it called? Nano. Nano sim. Oh wait, I have to sign up to continue? Log in. Sign up with Google, sure, I guess. Okay, cool. Do you have to pay for this? Oh my god, seriously? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> I think... I think this page is missing a thing or two. <laughs> some kind of yourself why not why not what's wrong with cutting it yourself oh my god okay so I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy a 24-hour pass for two dollars whatever two dollars I'm 100% sure that it's not... Okay, because the sim literally says... You know it says 
normal and then micro sim, you know? There's no nowhere on this does it say nano sim. You know, it's a, it shows the big one and the small one and then that's it. Like it's literally just not a nano sim. Because there's super, I don't even know why they wouldn't ask me in the store. It's like they could have just said, hey, what kind of sim do you need? No, 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 they just gave me this shit. And I obviously didn't ask because I assumed it just, you know. I assumed. PayPal, two euro seventy here. What? Jesus. No, nano sims are not thinner. It's literally the same sim card, just smaller. Okay, let me cut this now. It is now blue. Cool. Perfect. Did I download it? Hey, I didn't download. Hello? I pressed download. Where is it? What? I'm being scammed. Download. Oh, now I see it. I think my PC is dying. You can cut it by eye. Yeah, you can't actually cut it by eye though. That's troll. That is that is troll for sure. I'm not cut it. I'm not gonna cut it by eye. <laughs> this no 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 no. Vodafone living in 2010. Well, it just depends on where you're from, like, different providers, like, <laughs> in Italy, Vodafone is still very common. It just depends where you're from. Like, some, some carriers really messed up in certain countries, and in other countries it's still very uh, popular. Vodafone works really well here. Well, it works, I don't want to say it works really well, but it works better than most other providers. <laughs> Okay, now we have a blue version of this. Nice. Let's print it. Yeah, you have paper. Oh, actually, you don't have paper. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh my god, just please take the piece of paper. Just take it. Printer is, uh... This printer has some issues. <laughs> I'm amazed people still own printers in 2022. Man, you need to, like that's the thing. Like I hate printing stuff, but sometimes you just have to print things. You know, like like sometimes they send you a fucking contract you have to sign and you have to print it. I'm like, dude. Why do, why do you make me print a piece of paper? Okay, so we have a thing. We'll figure it out. I'll show you. So you can see what it looks like. Perfect. Nice. Yeah, the thing, like, you can't do doku sign if they don't do it. Like, the, the people that sent you the contracts have to do it on DocuSign. If they send you a contract without DocuSign, well, then you have to print it and sign it, right? It's just like, what are, what are you supposed to do? Okay, let's see. Him. So I'm supposed to tape this. I think I have an idea. Where's the tape? 
Oh, it's here, huh? Found the tape. Now, is there a ruler? onto the piece of paper and then draw the lines on the tape so I don't have to draw it onto on the nano the sim card right that is really smart I think yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> man this is an adventure okay <laughs> man this is content for real okay so we have the sim card We're taping it onto the wait this the actual thing looks smaller than the sim card fuck did it make it look smaller <laughs> shit let me see if this paper got printed smaller than it is it did get printed smaller fuck <laughs> oh all right <laughs> well let's figure this out Uh, custom, huh? Why is there no real size print option? The only option I have is fit to paper, fit to printable area. Hey, why isn't there an option that says don't change the, the scale of it? It doesn't say real size anywhere. God damn it. Okay, how hard is it actually though? Like, can I just cut it by eye? I mean, I just cut... I don't think I don't know. <laughs> no 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 <laughs> Man, I just don't know how am I supposed to print this paper? Well actually it does say the measurements here, right? What does it eight point eight millimeters? What's eight point eight millimeters? I mean this is not eight point eight this definitely isn't that. Or is it? No, there's no way. That's like a centimeter at least. That's more. That's a, you right? What does this? What does this refer to? The eight point eight millimeter thing. Hey, Lippy, what's up? <laughs> oh, is it like the outside part? No. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'll just cut it. I mean, how hard can it be? Right? Don't use scissors, I mean, what am I supposed to use? <laughs> what should I use? <laughs> Draw the lines? Well, I mean, how am I supposed to draw the lines, you know? Like, the line is literally just next to the sim. Because you see, uh, the sim card is just... Like, I think you literally just cut around the chip. So I can draw lines, but the line is already there. Because the line is the chip, right? So... <laughs> it will be fine. Dude, I honestly think it will be fine. A 
I'm doing it. It is happening. I'm cutting this. Okay, I'm gonna do a test cut on the side to see if my scissors work. Eh. Those scissors didn't work better. Let's try these scissors. They work slightly better. Okay, cutting close. I don't think I cut into it. I think I have to cut even closer though. Fuck. Thanks for 17 months. Yes, it goes up. <laughs> Shit, I actually now forgot which part the close part was. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, I remember. So this one we cut really close. Do we cut all really close? Yeah, I think we do. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, I actually no. have another <laughs> SIM card to compare it to. Oh, this is perfect. You have another SIM card. So this one is just like slightly closer. Didn't cut into the golden part yet. So this one is a bit further away apparently. The top part. Okay, I'm cutting. Okay, and then you have to like cut it like half. In the middle. Through the middle, I heard. Through the golden part. Dude, I'm not sure I might have cut into the golden part. Okay, it's still too big though. Can I just take a... Can I just take one of these five? <laughs> Can I just like file it down? <laughs> this is not working that great. <laughs> Thanks for 37, Adrian. What's up? I don't even know if this is working at all, actually. Okay, I don't think it fits yet. I think it's too big still. Okay, definitely still too big. Okay, which part is too big, though? Let's see. Okay, the top part is a bit too big. <laughs> all right. It does look better now. Let's see. I think it's still too big. Like the, the corners are supposed to be round, I think. Dude, it almost fits. Dude, it's so close. It's so close. Okay, the corners Welcome are just to like slightly too... This is so not gonna work. I definitely broke it now. <laughs> Thank you so much for Prime Sub, uh, Sub Mania. Appreciate that. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm just gonna file it down on all sides and then we see what happens. Okay, maybe it fits now. Testing. It still doesn't fit. <laughs> okay, which side is too big? I'm comparing. Ooh, I think the left side's a bit too big. Oh, yes. This side. Ooh, it's getting so close to the golden part now, though. I'm slightly afraid. I 
Oh my god, I'm totally gonna... I'm so close. I'm totally gonna break it now. Might fit now. Okay, giving it a try. Still too big, dude, what? Well, I can force it in. Maybe? No, not really. Okay, fuck. Okay, I'm gonna cut. What if I cut like the bottom part? So this plastic is just like breaking off. Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> hey, <laughs> trying? It's still slightly too big, I think. <laughs> Did I almost manage though? Like, it's so close. I think that's too big at the top. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, 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 wait. I'm cutting this a little more. Nice. Oh my god, it has to fit any second now. <laughs> hey, D, what's up? <laughs> Dude, how is it still too big? Okay, one more. Did this guy just sing I'd rather you that? Dude, that's so toxic. Can't be with you, so I wish you would be that instead. <laughs> Perfect. I am. <gasps> I would still, dude, I swear to God. This is insane. How small does it have to be? Yeah. I don't understand. The thing is, I probably broke it already anyway, so it doesn't work anymore, I assume. I surely broke this shit already. There's no way this still works. And it's nowhere near the correct shape. Also, I don't know the correct direction anymore. Is that important? <laughs> I think it's this direction. Drew, I think it fits now. Oh my god. Dude, I think it fits. As long as it stays in, right? Then it can be read properly. <laughs> oh 
Okay. Let's give it a try. <laughs> but will it work? I don't fucking know. This point. Oh wait, did I put it in the wrong side? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh my god, can I remove it again? <laughs> it's just stuck in here forever now. Oh, I got it. Man, I really wanted to uh, watch Dragonfly news and all I'm doing is cut SIM cards <laughs> into shapes. <laughs> but I'm glad you guys are um, rooting for me. Rooting for me to fail, I assume. <laughs> okay, testing. <laughs> There's just no way this works, right? There's, oh, oh no, never mind. So when I enter the SIM card, is something supposed to happen? <laughs> is there supposed to be something popping up or something? Oh, I guess I have to restart the phone. Okay, wait. Restarting phone. Why does it open Bixby when I press this button? Okay, I need to change this like very soon. Uh, restart. Restart. Okay. Okay, let me get the sim here. Add uh, the, the pin. You can't see this, right? Good. Don't want you to steal my phone. Okay. <laughs> Please ask me for my pin code. <laughs> oh, I didn't ask you for my pin code. Yeah, I don't think it's reading the SIM card, guys. I don't think it's working. <laughs> All right. Well, don't worry, we're gonna figure it out. Oh, shit, how to remove this again now? Okay, wait, I need a, I need something <laughs> to get the sim card out. All right. This should work. Oh my god, how do I get one of these out? Ah! Okay, this is... Um, oh, I have this... Huh? Okay, perfect. Thanks for telling me what I need to do, Hello, I pressed. I'm pressing it. Come on, why doesn't this work? <laughs> this should definitely work, right? I'm pressing with the SIM card. 
Is it because it's not straight? Fuck! <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just don't have a proper thing. I'm not sure if I have a proper thing anywhere for this shit. Oh, I'm gonna use this piece of plastic that I cut off the SIM cards. Maybe that works. It doesn't work. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck, why well, don't have like the proper thing? Shit, did I throw it away? Let me find it. Uh, I have this thing for my phone here, but I think I lost it. Maybe it's somewhere in here. I think I threw it away. Typical. It's definitely not in here. Yeah, I think I threw it away. Whoops. Um, okay, what else do we have? I mean, this should work. <laughs> I think this should work. Why doesn't it? <laughs> hmm. What else do I have that could open this? Earring. Oh, I do have that somewhere. I do have an earring here. Oh, that's actually a great idea. Okay, let's try the earring. That worked! Oh my god, what would I do without Twitch chat, actually? You're a genius! Okay, so why didn't this work? I guess it's not all the way in properly. I don't fucking know, dude. Uh, I guess we cut some more. At <laughs> this point, we might as well. And it looks decently cut, actually. It looks pretty good. I don't know why it doesn't work. Maybe it's like, like slightly more at the bottom. I mean, how specific do you have to cut it though? Like what if you actually have to cut it very specifically? Because otherwise it doesn't read it. Because I definitely didn't cut it specifically. I just cut it somehow. No, it's not thinner, guys. Listen, it's literally the same sim. It's just smaller. It's the same. It's for sure just the same. And maybe I did accidentally cut into the golden part. <laughs> I mean, I know I can go to the shop and get a new SIM card. Like, I do know that. The thing is, I don't want to do that because it's 20 minutes drive and I drove there literally today. I know I could drive there and ask them to give me the smaller. Like, I know that. It's just, <laughs> I just don't want to. Like, <laughs> I just don't want to do that. It's the problem. <laughs> I mean, it does seem to be fitting better now. Yeah, I think it fits better now. Let's see. Let's give it another try.
Yeah, I could also try the thing with the eSIM. Like, I do know that as well. But I think eSIM is just a different card, so I would have to pay for it again. You know? Ooh! SIM card manager! Sim one, Vodafone. Unknown number. Hmm. <laughs> Wait a second. Why is it unknown? <laughs> Thanks for 30 months, Mara. What's up? I mean, it's possible that a micro SIM card is a bit thicker than a nano SIM card, but only the outer part, not the middle part, because they always give you, like whenever you buy a SIM card, they give you these things, yeah? Where you have the big, you can use the big part, or you can use the small part, or use the, all the, the, like, the smallest part, right? Like either use the whole card, or use the micro SIM card, or use the nano SIM card, right? So it has to be possible to cut it, otherwise you wouldn't be able to, otherwise you would, they would have to be all different cards, right? Like it's just the plastic that is different. The actual, the actual chip is the same no matter what. It's just the plastic around it that is different. And it's possible that the micro SIM card is bigger, but then it's just the plastic that is bigger. Not the actual like, na na nano part, you know? Oh my god, it has my number two! Amazing! <laughs> Question is, why would you cut it? Well, because I only have the micro part and not the nano part. No, you can't burn... They gave me the wrong... So this is probably like a really old... Because in the past... At first you only had the big SIM cards, right? And then at some point they changed it to the, to the micro SIM cards. And then even later they changed it to the nano SIM cards, the smallest ones. And I assume that the person at the store gave me the wrong SIM card. It is probably a really old one. Like, he probably gave me this one that is, like, micro only instead of nano. So they probably just messed up because they didn't even ask me about it either. So I assume that they thought that this is also a nano one. Because otherwise they would ask me for sure, right? Because who the fuck uses micro SIM cards anymore nowadays? So I'm sure they just picked up the wrong one, like in the fucking store or whatever, and for, didn't notice. Please wait for a while. I will wait for a while. But it doesn't matter because we cut it now and it seems to be working, so we're all good. Everything worked out just fine. <laughs> Amazing. You can call me, um, I'm basically an engineer now. So, please call me Dr. Engineer Nagura from now on. Appreciate it, thank you. Okay, I have this other SIM card here. I'm just gonna put it over here. Hope I don't lose it. Cool. Now we can play video games. When my phone is done figuring it out, I guess. <laughs> Professor, doctor, doctor, engineer. Yep, that's me. <laughs> Yeah, it still says, please wait for a while. Whatever, we're waiting for a while, I guess. Cool. So, I heard Alpha got released. I missed literally everything about it. Okay, do you guys want to... Like, is there some good videos I should be watching? Like, from any like content creator that reviewed it? Or should I just log into it myself right now and look at it myself first? Because I can do that, of course, because I obviously have alpha access. I didn't think I would have, have access, but then uh, 
I talked to Athelis and he said I do, so I'm like, yes. <laughs> Thanks for putting my little major what's up? <laughs> Yeah, same little mate, the same. <laughs> wait, no, wait, you're being serious. No, you're not being serious, okay. For a second, I thought you got some codes that you want to redeem, like TwitchCon codes. Yeah, there were so many people that didn't get to meet me because um, I obviously didn't have socials, so I couldn't say where I am all the time, you know? So no one really knew where I was or that I'm there. Just sucked a little, but... It is what it is. Why don't you see the game? Oh, there it is. Dude, why is this music so intense? Calm down. So is there a difference between Alliance Drakthir and Horde? Or is it the same? Looks the same. <laughs> Alright, let's play Alliance. So there's two bodies only. Oh, I see. It's a uh, male, female, basically. Yeah. Okay. Does the dragon look the same? Kind of. And. Evoker is an advanced class. If you're new to World of Warcraft, we strongly recommend starting with a different class. You'll miss the trolley if you start with this class. Oh no! Are we sure we want to do this, guys? You'll miss the trolley if you proceed. Command starting with a different class. You can always come back once you're more familiar with the game. Whew! Okay, um. Okay, I do, I do accept. Aww, you're so pretty! Look at the dragon! What a cutie pie! Cool, skin color. Ooh, ooh, I want this color. Ooh, it's beautiful. Can it be different colors? Or just one? I want this. Accent color. Ooh, there's an accent color. Ooh, alright. Okay. Hmm, like brownish and purple looks really good. I'm like a fan of this, I think. I think I like this. This. Looks really nice. What do you think? I also like this color. Be a white ray, like double white. Are you still have the scales still? Oh wait, does this change the scales? Oh, it's not only the horns. Okay. Now I think I like this the most. What about the scale? Uh, the scales color. Can you not change it at all? Is it just always this like bluish, purplish? Like this color here. The accent color is, is everything else. But I mean these scales, are they just the same? Oh, it's further ahead. Oh, we can change that too. Okay, let's see. Oh, that's something else. Where is it? Like this the scale color. Where, where is it? I don't see it. Cheek, brow, chest, ears, jewelry. Body top. Oh, this one. Ah. Ah, okay. 
it. Like, I mean, it's, it's still purple though. Like, either it's just there or it's not. Oh, it's here! Oh my god, I'm stupid. Hmm, alright. This is difficult. It's a very difficult decision. I think I'll go with this. Ooh, there's body markings. Ooh, I see. Okay. What does the back look like? I think I'll go with Ash. Be nobody mark. The one on the torso, they look cute. Those. I like this. What about the color? Hmm, this is this is uh, such a hard decision. Because uh, now I have to change this color again. Now that I see, huh? Black's kind of cute. Hmm. Now, honestly, I think I like purple. Oh, I like this color so much. Is there a red color here too? I think there's no red. Ooh, this. Mm, it's a bit too red, though. Black and red? Looks cute-ish. No, I think purple is nicer. This is the nicest for sure. Definitely this one. Okay, and the mark is the problem is this purple is nice, but it doesn't fit that much with the red. I don't know. I don't know about this. Maybe this is better. But it's too subtle. This maybe. Yeah, okay, let's go with this. What about the horns? Wait. Face. Ooh. Accent color strip. Oh, we could do medium. I didn't see that. Fuck. <gasps> what? It can't be a red dragon. I, I look like the fucking devil. What? That's so cool. Oh, shit. Now I have to rethink everything again. What? I look like Satan. I love it. Wait, wait. Can I ask to think of the body markings again? Wait a second, wait a second. Ooh, alright. Ooh, I like this. Ooh, that is so pretty. <laughs> oh 
Oh my god, I love this giant. Alright, let's go. Wait, 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 what else? Face. I look so friendly! Like a friendly neighborhood Satan! Thanks for 30 months, Marlo, what's up? <laughs> look, he's, he's, he's nice and evil at the same time! That's so cute, I love it! Alright, so let's see, snout? Ah, oh, this is the cutest! Cyan and Drake. This one or this one? Ah, oh, this is cute. He's like smiling. Look, he's literally smiling at us. It's a cute devil. Thanks for prime sub, Samuel. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right, look, smiling. <laughs> she, sorry, yeah. Look, she's smiling. She's such a cutie pie. No. Hey, let's look at the horns. Oh no, she kind of a broken one. No, no, no. Oh, none? Mm, now we do need horns, right? But cute horns. They have to be somewhat cute, right? Oh, they're pretty though. Thanks for five months, Lolly. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. We're gonna have to change. Oh, it changes the. Oh, it changes this part too. Oh my god, he can have like golden horns. Damn. Oh, it has to be black though, right? Wait, you can't change this part. Or is this jewelry or something? What's this part here? Oh, it's last option, jewelry. Can I change it? Oh! Ah, there we go. Yeah, I don't like this. Oh, wait, actually. Ah, oh, I see. You can have chains and stuff. That's kind of cute. Oh, man. Look, she's. She's such. She's so cute, isn't she? I think I like the horns. I think I like the jewelry and the horns, though. Oh, look at her! She's like smiling and all cute. Aww. Okay, let's see ears. No ears. I think we're gonna have. Get, yeah, we need some ears. Cute ears. Oh, that's cute. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> this is complicated. Yeah, I think these ears are cute. Yeah. Brows. Now, bone's too angry. Now she looks angry. Okay, we. No brows. Cheekbone. Mm. I'm 
I'm sure about these because they make it look a bit cuter when she has it, right? These horns on the sides. I think they make her look slightly cuter than not having it, right? What do you think? Like, no horns or horns? It's like sideburns, but like in a cute, cute way. Yeah, right? Horns. Yeah, like this is cute, I think. Let's try without again. I think this makes her look cuter. Yeah, okay. Throat. Oh, these are the horns. I see. I think here we go with nothing. Even though those are cute as well. Yeah, we go with nothing here. Okay, wait. Then I side both left. Oh. No, I don't want to be blind. Even though that will be very fitting. Okay, let's see eye color. Oh, I think this is cute. This here, I think. Yeah, I like this the most, I think. And she's just such a cutie pie. Eye style slit. Oh, we can have... Ooh. Okay, this is creepy. This is cute. This is maybe a bit more angry. Let's go with this. Face pattern. Oh. Oh. This is cute, I think. Now, actually, I think this is the cutest. With the, with only at the top. Right? Or do you think nothing? Nothing's also cute. Nothing or this one, guys. Nothing or smolder. Or nothing. Nothing's also cute. Small there it is. What about this? No face markings. I'm gonna go with none. Or we could go with none here and then some face markings here. She's so cute though without any face marking. Right? Yeah, like this is cute. Okay, this is cute. Moving on. Body size, let's see it. Uh huh? Oh, she's so skinny this way, right? Like this, she's like, yes! A bit skinny, I'm uh, sorry. I mean, she does have a cute face. Four is Giga Chat, right? Hmm. I'm very unsure about this one. I think she's a Giga Chat. Yeah, I think we go with four. because usually really skinny models look weird in my opinion like I don't like female blood elves because they're too skinny so they just look awkward when they do anything I go with four okay then arm spikes oh you can barely see those oh they're in the back okay I see I see now nah, we don't need arm spikes body pattern ash oh I already looked at this earlier I 
want a dash. We already did all of this, okay. No. Then how none. I mean, that's a bit over the top. We don't want that. Wait, but... No, we don't want that either. You know, that is kind of cute. This one's cute. Nah. You have, like, full armor. What the hell? Now I want to be naked. Ooh, this is super cute, though. Ah, I don't think I go with this, though. Okay, wait, let's go... But I don't think you can change the color of the jewelry, or can you? Like, this is just so golden. You can't change the golden color, right? Oh, you can. No, but I have the jewelry color gray, and these are golden. color but oh it changes ah so this is supposed to be red ah, I see it ah okay now this looks better so golden looks really messed up but now with with this color it looks much better I still I'm gonna go with this but maybe I go with these like the arm things? I am unsure. Nah. Nah, fuck it. These are cute though. There you go with the bracelets. And with the tail and things. Maybe not with the wing thing? Only the arm thing? What do you think? I, I think the wing spikes look kind of cute. I don't like the rings. Let's go with, with the bracelets only. Then waist. Oh, you can eat even more! Shit! There's just so much! Nah, none of that. Ooh, nice, cute. Ah, oh, I can have matching uh, feet bracelets and arm bracelets. Gonna have a bear tail. Tail rich. I think we can have spikes in the tail. Looks cute. Oh man, she's just so happy. Look at her. Alright, I think this is it. Okay, cool. Now human form. All right, lady. Ah, oh, her hair is so pretty. Okay, we want to look slightly tan because I can't be tan in real life. So we're gonna go with a tan, okay, like this. Perfect. Then face. Let's see. Can we remove these face markings so I can see her hair? Uh, 
But there we go. Okay, we need to give some eyebrows. That's why she looks weird. Okay. Okay, let's just do none on everything. For now. And then we'll figure it out. Earrings, none. None. Blood top, small body scale, none. Air highlights, none. Okay. Can you not remove these markings? Are they just like there? The scales, I mean. So pretty. Maybe it's face. Oh no, I cannot. Thank you so much for two months, Race. What's up? <laughs> she has a scale beard though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She definitely does have a scale beard. Okay, let's see it. Face one, two, three. Does she always have a scale beard? Scale color? Let's see. I just can't put it to none. I guess there's just always gonna be uh, scales in her face. Whatever, it is what it is. There's an option chin. Perfect. Cool. Okay, now we can see her face better. Let's see him. I want the happiest face. They all look a bit angry. Right? I want the happy one. Why do they all look so angry? Maybe, maybe she looks angry because she turns into a dragon once in a while. Maybe this is the happiest one. I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> I know this hard. Okay, well let's keep this face for now, and then we'll see it. Hairstyle. Ooh, dude, that's honestly cute. But the problem is, I really like the hair decorations. I don't think you, you can have many hair decorations if you're bald. But I think it is really cute. I do like this a lot. Oh, this is insane as well. What the fuck? Why are these hairstyles so amazing? Dude, that looks so cool. God, they're all so pretty. Dude, what? Okay, this is a bit much. That's insane too. I love this braid. So here's the thing, I always look at my character from the back, right? So it needs to look really good from the back. Oh, that's cute. Ooh, huh? And also cute. Also very cute. But I can't decide. Twin buns. I think the best one was... Either this one, I really like this one. It's just very nice. This braid is just really good, though. I also like... Ah, uh, this is too much, I think. Ooh, I also like this. It's so good, though. Dude, I love this one, though. This one's just amazing. I 
Fuck, I can't decide. <laughs> I cannot decide, guys. What are we gonna go with? Ah! This is just... Oh, the braid looks so cute, though. I love the like a, I love the decoration of the braid. It just looks so nice. Like the way it's waved through. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Let's go with the braids. Okay, so we have to go with like a reddish color because my dragon is red. We can go this color too. We could go. Hmm. Yeah, like this. <laughs> There's way, way too many nice colors. Dude, this is just too much. I can't do it. I can't decide. How am I supposed to decide? I like this the most, I think. Oh, you can do the bottom differently? Huh! <laughs> the bottom differently mm, I should get a pink one <laughs> oh, shit now nah, we go with nothing okay what about her horns? We do want horns. Or do we? I'm not sure. Do we want horns? They look pretty fabulous. They do look pretty nice. Thanks for nine months now, so what's up? I didn't have another fun at TwitchCon, thank you! They definitely take it away from the hair a little, that is true. Let's try without horns for now, and then at the end we might add some. Sigil and stuff is like blue. Maybe you can change that. Uh. Can you change her eyes? They look very like snaky. Maybe not. Hmm, I am not sure. Ooh, I like these eyebrows, they're cute. Oh, she's such a cutie pie, look at her.
think the long ones are cute. She looks like an elf. Ooh, I really like the, the tip earrings. They're really nice. These ones, aren't they cute? They're so cute. What? That's amazing. Yeah, I love them. Big fan. Or the spiky ones. They're pretty nice too. Maybe they're even cuter, actually. I think I like those more. Yeah, they're cute. Oh, I can have a different nose. Oh, there's just one or two, okay. Oh yeah, it's like she doesn't even have a nose at this point. Let's go with this one. Chin. Oh, either uh, uh, scales or no scales. I think we go with no scales, because it does kind of look like she has a beard. No necklace. Oh, you can change it. Oh, Ooh, it looks so good with his golden in her hair, though. I don't think I can go with golden ones, though. I think it has to be silver. Ooh, it does look really nice. This color looks really good. Oh my god, it looks so good. Dude, I love this one. I think I have to go with this one. It's just so nice. Yeah, we're going with this. <laughs> Alright. Cool. Then, uh, underclothes top. Oh, why can I change this? This is comp this is new. Why can you change this? Is this important? Thanks for 63 months in station, what's up? <laughs> huh. Is the dragon like naked a lot or something? Or it's just when you want to run around naked. Yeah, I don't think I want to run around naked. I think I'm just gonna do the this one because actually, yeah, if it sucks a little bit. That it, did, are you gonna see this necklace line all the time? Like this part around her neck. Do you see this all the time, no matter what she wears? Cause that would be weird. She's swole. Oh, she can have body scales? Hmm. Nothing to go without. So where's the boob slider? Or the body type slider? Is there no body types? Is this just like, this is your body? Or... Is that how it works? It's like, this is what you look like. Or is it related to the body type you took for the dragon? Okay, I like her. She's cute. Oh, she's so cute. Look at her. Oh, me and my dragon are just the cutest. Look at my beautiful dragon. And me. Aww. It's, it's, it's a cute version of Satan. And, uh, and the pretty lady. <laughs> Thanks for 55 months, Agrathar. What's up? <laughs> also, I mean, look how beautiful her hair. Oh, it's just so pretty. So pretty. Big fan. Very big fan. Oh, I can change the clothes color? Oh, I should do that, right? Ah, no, wait, this is, oh, I think this is the best. This is good, yeah. Yeah, this is the best. Okay, she's very pretty. Very pretty. 
The blue armor doesn't fit her very much, but that's just the initial stuff, right? Okay, what name? Dragura. No, that sounds wrong. What does that sound? <laughs> Dragura it is. I accept. And why does he have... Why does my dragon have shoulders now? Hey, where are the shoulders coming from? I didn't choose shoulders. Oh, it's gear. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I want to remove them. My dragon is naked, okay? She just, she needs no clothes. She's pretty the way she is. Shit. Oh, it works now, I think. Update on my SIM card? Seems to be working. Done. Perfect. Alright, let's see. Oh my god, my... That's definitely human female walking animation and jumping animation. Pretty certain. That's good though. Because I love female human animations. They're really good. Oh, all of this looks different. <laughs> oh my god. All of this looks different. I love it. Okay. Um, 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 um. Controls. Empowered spell input. Empowered spells. As opposed to a cast or a channel spell, requires second input to complete the spell. What? That's cool. Hold and, hold and release allows you to begin a cast. Begin casting a spell by pressing and holding down your spell key. Release the spell when you release the key. Press and tap. Press tap allows you to tap the spell once, start casting, and then tap the second time when you want. I think press and tap makes more sense. I don't want to be holding down a spell. Oh, thank the Lord. Okay, camera. Dude, I do wish. Dude, there's. I wish there's something they would do. And that's the movement keys. I'm not sure. Yeah, like when you log on, your W, your A and D is set to keyboard turn, and I wish they would change that. Cause I don't know. Like I, like I don't think people that are new to the game should get used to that at all like I think I think everyone should get used to straving and I think they should just set it to default all right let's see um woman keys all right now we can play the game The mini, the mini map looks so big. I love it. Okay, so let's see. Um, I thought they changed this too. Doesn't look like they changed it though. Or can you change it somehow? Ooh. Fancy? Oh, you can share it too? Sick. Ooh, okay, okay, okay.
I'm a big fan of this. Mentation or stencil of rose, I can set, I can padding, barbicel, always just over it. Okay. Quick key by Moy as well, nice. Nice. Okay, cool. So can you oh it's not implemented the new sh frames okay I see yeah because I, I was thinking that I saw um, the frames being different on the preview okay do you have a cast that I can just like cast real quick oh dude the, the cast bar looks really cute. I love that. Where do you move? I hope you can move the cast bar, right? Can you move it? Okay, this is only action bars, right? Or can you... Yeah, I, th I think this only is for action bars at the moment, right? Or oh, it's tied to one of the action bars unless you stick it to here. Okay, that sucks a little. I think that should be freely, like, movable. Because you can put the cast bar to your frame. Oh. Okay, that seems to be bugged. I don't see if it works. Oh, it does work, but it's a bit... Like, it's covered by... Right? Yeah, so just a bit messed up. I guess it looks good if you're... I assume it looks good if you have the different uh, modes, like the different unit frames. And that looks bad still. Let's move, move this away. Oh, can I not move it away anymore now? Fuck. How do I move this now? <laughs> No. I don't think I can move it in editing mode. At least I don't see it, like anywhere. Hmm. I can reload, I guess. Okay, it's down here now. Yeah, whatever. Let's just keep it down here for now. But yeah, that should be freely movable, I think, the cast bar. Mm, and yeah, let's check out this... Um, where's my... F oh, they changed all of this too, okay. So we have one bag, nice. They changed all of these icons here, bits. They're cleaner now. This also looks... Bit cleaner, right? Or um, is it, is it? I don't know. I'm not sure because I use I always use add-ons. So I don't know if it will have what it looks like normally. Uh, what's too loud? Sorry, which music is loud? The Inga music or my music? Hmm. Oh wait. Um, um, um... Audio. Oh, there's some bug too here. Well, I mean, I guess it's not bugged, but it's... <laughs> it doesn't fit properly, so I guess they should maybe only do it in a row. This is, right now there's two rows, right? The left is one row, and then right is one row, but because my names are pretty big, they like overlap and it looks weird. 
Do you report this as a bug or as feedback? <laughs> is that some? I think you should just report that as a bug, right? Maybe? It's such a small thing. Zone bug. How do you report UI bug? It's by default, this button is like zone bug. Thanks for five months, Tiny Muno. What's up? Hello, hello. But the the music is better now, right? Or is it? Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Um, you're in the wrong zone. Oh, are these? It's a dragon riding mount. I see him. Uh, thank you so much for gifting a sub. I appreciate that, Vlossman. Thank you so, so much. Welcome to Erroneous. Hey, anyway, plugs. Okay, let me just quickly test some abilities. Trigger calming presence is increasing your out of combat health. Oh. Oh, yeah, let's look at the racials real quick. Racial glide. Reduce your falling speed. Oh! <laughs> okay, that's funny. So you just get like a small... Okay. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Can you do this? Oh, you can also do this normally! It's like a double jump. Just not as powerful as a double jump, it seems like. This is really nice, though. Like, I think you're gonna be really fun. Because right now, a demon hunter... A demon hunter that uh, double jumps is not actually faster than when you're just normally walking, right? But I think with this you're faster than if you normally walk. So if you're in a dungeon or something and you need to walk somewhere and you can't mount, then I assume you're gonna be somewhat faster with this. That's interesting. Then, master your strength and launch into the air. Oh. Oh, shit! <laughs> okay, that's pretty amazing. But, so, I'm not flying, I'm gliding. And I definitely fall down. Oh, I just see <laughs> Well, well, well. <laughs> I just see because I was trying to jump while I fell down, I think. I guess I report this bug. I disconnected as I was fall, falling, gliding in direct the air form. Presumably because I pressed space bar a few times. It's about we soar. Oh, maybe. Ooh, the animation looks really cool, though. That red animation looks nice. It's cute, it's cute. Can I mount up in a dragon form? No. Okay. That makes sense, I guess. 
Okay, wait, look, what else? Wait, do we have to read this still? Tail sweat, blast out about you knocking enemies in six years since the year. <laughs> okay. Six yards, that's very, very short range. 1.5 minute cooldown as well. Oh, so you if you're in human form, people get out of combat health generation. Ah, okay. That's kind of nice, I guess. Ish. I mean, it's kind of useless, but at the same time, it's like cute. A cute buff. I don't think it's really useful, but... <laughs> Wing buffet, with a powerful flap of your wings, knock away enemies in front of you. What does that mean? Like, there's no yard indicator. Is it Typhoon, or is it smaller range? I guess we can see an animation. Oh, that seems to... that seems like a lot of range. How far did it get knocked? The, the cone seems wider compared to Typhoon. Um, it seems wider, at least. Not sure if it's actually wider. Um, and yeah, it's a long cooldown as well. Pretty long. Then, increase your mastery by 2.5%. Increase your perception by 50. Perception increases the radius of tracking, mining, and herbalism notes, and it shows of finding additional rare materials. Okay, interesting. Uh, you fly to the faster on continents that you have fully explored? Okay. While soaring through the air, pointing yourself towards any given direction sends you in that direction. Pointing yourself downwards grants more momentum. Uh, uh, evening out can transfer the momentum forward. Pointing yourself upward slows you down. When at your slowest, you will start to fall slowly towards the ground. Forward and down. Search forward. Flap forward at a short distance. Flap upward, getting high. Okay, cool. You know, axe, daggers, fist weapons, mace, safe, and swords. That's pretty normal. Uh, thanks for six months. Oh, about what's up? Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is so good to hear, all of them. I'm so glad good things happened to you today. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Okay, and then here we have all of the, the colors, right? Of the actual, like... Like, you have the blue spell, bronze, black, green, red. Project intense energy onto two enemies, dealing spell frost damage to them. At random? Like, are the, the, two, the two targets are random? Or what? That seems interesting. Or is it like the two closest? So this time it, this one is closer. So maybe this is the closest. Yeah, it always seems to be hitting this one. And what if I move over here? Oh! Okay, so it's not close. Is it closest to target? What if I move here? So it's closest to my target. That makes sense, I guess. So this this dummy is considered the closest. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. What is the range on this? Like if I hit this one, is it gonna hit anything else? What if I'm what if I am close enough? I got, okay, it definitely doesn't have a lot. Of Like, the spell itself is 25 yards range, right? Hmm, okay. I don't know what the actual range is, and I don't think- I don't know how to test it. I wish they would give us a, a testing area. Like, something that you can move in, and then you can put dummies down however you want. And you can reset your cooldowns and stuff. That'd be nice. Especially for these kind of like alpha tests and stuff.
Um. All right, let's see. Then we have. Also, what what is spell frost damage actually? Is that just frost damage? What is spell frost? Or it's arcane and frost. I think it's spell frost. What does that mean? <laughs> huh. Huh, let's see. See, this one only does fire damage. It specifically says fire damage. But this one says spell frost and not frost. So that's a bit weird. So either it's like... Either it's like a new type of spell damage, or it's a combination of two, right? Usually it's not very important what kind of damage it does, but sometimes it is important, like, if you can get interrupted on a spell. Right, like, if I cast, um... A Chaos Bolt as a Warlock and I get interrupted, then I'm Chaos Locked. Which means I cannot cast anything. But if I'm Fire Locked, I can still cast other spells, like, then I can only not cast Fire Spells, right? And as a Moonkin, if I get locked on Astral, then I'm locked in Nature and Arcane, right? Uh, but if I'm only locked arcane, I can still cast nature spells, basically. Yeah, it might be arcane and frost, yeah. It might be arcane and frost. Anyway, let's keep uh, going. So this is just like a completely normal ability that does damage. It's interesting that it doesn't do anything else, it doesn't cost anything either, this spell. Like, it literally has no cost. No cast time, and no, um, like, stacks or anything? It's literally just like a filler spell, I guess. And you just spend this ability forever. So, I guess it's just like some filler thing. But not many, not many classes, especially ranged DPS, don't have abilities like this usually. It doesn't have a CD, yeah, exactly, it doesn't have a CD. I don't think I know a single ranged DPS that has a spell like this. So that's interesting, I guess. Yeah, Moonfire's a dot, though. Moonfire and Sunfire are dots. Well, no, it's not the same thing. Oh, Frost Shock. Well, yeah, Frost Shock is, I guess, similar. But it also applies, a, like, a slow, right? So it has like an effect other than the damage itself. But anyway, uh, let's move on. So this one is 2,000 mana, 40 yards range. So this one is not uh, shorter range. Uh, weave the threats of time, reducing the cooldown of the, of the A major movement. There's a typo. Of a major movement ability for all party and raid members by 50% for one hour. That's your move. <laughs> Guess you report it. Typo in Blessing of the Bronze. Reducing pull down of the a major. Oh, you can F6 a spell to report it. Oh, I should have done that. Ooh, my bad. Oh, that's good to know. Okay, so this is pretty cool. This spell is nice. Wait, 15 second cooldown? I'm sorry, what? Oh, it's a buff. Oh, it's a permanent buff. Ah, okay. That's a bit weird. 
That is so weird. Hmm. I mean, I guess I like it, but at the same time, it's definitely weird. Like, I, I think it would be, like, maybe even better if it just made the speed stronger? You know what I mean? Like, a cooldown reduction as a buff is a bit awkward, I think. Maybe. I don't know, it feels a bit awkward. I think it would be cooler if it was an active ability. Like, if you press it, it reduces the cooldown. Like, kind of like Hymn of Hope. Or whatever it's called. For a priest. Because if it's a permanent buff, I think... I think it generally makes more sense if it would just increase... Like, improve the movement speed of your abilities. <laughs> so it's like, oh, instead of 30% movement speed, you get like 40 or whatever. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> Not that it's like a big deal, but it, it's, it just seems a bit awkward. Because I guess some classes don't have movement speed abilities, so I guess it makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's fine. Anyway, then what is this? Deep breath. Too many cooldowns. Taking a deep breath and fly to targeted location, spewing molten cinders, dealing volcanic damage. What's volcanic damage? Fire and what? Maybe volcanic damage is actually new. Like, maybe it's not the combination. I think volcanic might actually just be new. Or is it fire and nature? Maybe it's fire and nature, actually, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Probably fire and nature. You're immune to movement impairing and loss of control effects while flying. Ooh. The question is, can you also get out of root effects with this spell? Twenty to fifty yards, it's a long range. Oh, it's targeted. <laughs> okay, what the hell? I've never seen an indicator like this. And you can use it in all directions as well. Can you do it backwards without looking at the target? I'm testing this now. Okay, yes you can. Ooh. That's a long cooldown. <laughs> Too many cooldown. Hmm. I mean, the ability looks really cool. And I guess, I mean, I don't know the talents and stuff yet, right? So it might be... Because um, right now, it just doesn't seem to be interacting with anything. Well, nothing seems to be interacting with anything else at the moment. So I guess it's like a talent thing. Then what is this? And this costs three essences. I just realized I have these essence things. Is that like a mastery thing? Wait, let's see. Uh... Okay, damage. Release the innate power as chaotic red flames or focus blue magic to bathe... The battlefield in destruction. Preferred weapons, steps, uh, blah blah blah. Uh, sample abilities. Uh, lob a ball of flame dealing fire damage to the target and nearby enemies. Okay, that's it. What is it? What's my mastery? Increase the damage of your spells by up to 22.5%. Based on the current health. Based on the current health of your target. Higher health, target take more damage. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, that seems really OP for, like, burst AoE stuff. That seems, like, really, really good for M+, for example. But it also seems somewhat bad for single target stuff, I guess? I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be bad, but... Like, if, if a stat of yours only works at the start of a fight and that doesn't work anymore at the end of a fight, then that's somewhat, like, meh. Because most other sp stats work all the time, right? 
So if you have a stat like mastery and you have a full single target fight, uh, I assume mastery is not going to be very good then, right? Like in a full patchwork fight, I assume mastery is going to be meh, I guess. Unless there's some talents that make it work better on other things or something. Oh, okay, race. Hmm. Interesting. The funny thing about this mastery, I think, is that um, this makes it really hard to properly... I think this makes it really hard to properly um, sim your character. And that is gonna be interesting, I think. I think some people are gonna be running the wrong stats a lot because they sim like full single target and then your mastery is gonna lose value obviously while there might be a lot of fights where it still increases has a lot of extra value because it spawns adds randomly or whatever you know um so yeah i think this makes the stats thing a lot harder to figure out as like a player like the theory crafting around this might be a bit harder because it's 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 hard to just figure out proper values for it right because it's so fight dependent. But that's interesting. I like it. I like it. Very uh, unique and interesting. Alright. Mo moving on. Uh, tear into an enemy with a blast of blue magic. What the fuck's blue magic? Oh, spell frost. Inflicting spell frost damage over 2.6 seconds, showering their movement speed by 30% for 3 seconds. It's a channel. It's slow. Okay. Okay, and you can move during this channel at least. This ability seems pretty bad. Well, like it could be a filler technically. Like it could be a uh, uh, what is it called? Like like mind seer or whatever from a shadow priest, something like that. Or what's the Affliction Warlock thing called? Uh, the channel thing? I forgot the name. It's not even an Affliction Warlock thing, it's just like... <laughs> Drain Soul, yeah, there we go. Hey, Rilo! <laughs> okay, then what else do we have? Uh, 30 seconds cooldown. You grow a buff from the Emerald Dream at an LS location after 2 seconds heal up to 300... Oh, so... So, the Devastation um, spec also has some heals, which is cool. It's, it's a hybrid -y, which makes sense, right? <laughs> so it's a uh, Valkyrie Emerald, blah, 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 blah. after she's going to heal up to 300 allies within 10 years for... Oh, this is a burst heal though, right? Not heal over time? Oh, that's very interesting. It's really big as well. So this is like a, like a burst heal thing. Does another class have something similar to this? The only thing I could think of right now is like healing mushrooms from a Rasta Druid, but you could choose when to explode them. And this one just explodes after three seconds. Rasta is the same spell? You mean Aflo? Nah. Aflo is very different. Aflo you put down and it heals over time. This. This you put down, and after two seconds, it's a burst heal. Life Bloom? Oh, Life Bloom is a targeted spell. And this, like a targeted uh, on player? And this is a target on ground ability, right? Or is it not? Wait. Or does it just put this on me? Oh, it puts it on me? Oh no, ally location. Oh, so it is not ground targeted. Oh, that sucks. I think it would have been cooler if it was ground targeted. It also might have been more complicated. Man, but stuff like this, I wish it was ground targeted. Because... Uh, then you can do so many cool things with it, right? 
Like, especially in a fight where there's a lot of movement going on, because this heal doesn't work instantly. It's after two seconds. So, well, two seconds is not a long time, but if you walk around or something, you can put it in people's paths, and then, like, you walk into it, right? But if it's a targeted spell, and people are walking, then people might walk out of it as it goes off, in a sense, right? So I do wish this one, this was ground targeted. Or maybe, I wish there would be an option to ha either have it ground targeted or... Because I understand why um, they don't generally want to put abilities ground targeted. Because I think ground targeted is harder to execute than just to cast another player, right? So maybe that's why they they chose to not have it a ground target spell. But I wish there would be an option to say, hey, I'm either gonna cast this on this player or I'm gonna put it on the ground. But we'll see. yeah, maybe there's like other things they can do with it. I don't know. Let's just keep uh, keep reading and see what happens. Then fire breath. So right now this is the only healing ability we found. Everything else is like damage or slow or stuff. Then, uh, to empower. Inhale. Stoking your inner flame, release to exhale. Uh, burning enemies in a cone in front of you. For fire damage, deals reduce damage beyond five targets. Oh my god, they're target capped. Oh no. Oh look, it's mirrors. Um, then. Oh, this is the empower thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see him. Well met. Okay, it puts a dot as well, and the dot is also better. Oh no, it's not. So the the instant damage is the same no matter what, right? But the dot that releases afterwards is, is higher the longer you channel it. Okay, so that's also interesting because that means you don't have to channel it if you just want to like do damage fast, right? Especially when the mobs die really quickly. And this spell seems to be just in front of you. So no targeting. Oh, you can move! Ah, okay, so you can change direction while channeling this. But you can't move, right? Let's check. Let's see if we can move. Probably not. I mean, that would be weird. Yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway, hover. Launch yourself and gain 30% increased movement speed for 6 seconds. Allows evoker spells to be cast while moving. Does not affect empowered spells. Okay. So, you can cast everything while moving for 6 seconds every 30 seconds. What is a much worse stellar drift? <laughs> and you cannot cast in power spells. Oh, that was not us. Oh, this is also an power spell. Fuck. Oh no, it's not an power spell. Never mind. Okay, this is cool. Like the hover thing is cool. Yeah, I like it. Then, uh, 1.5 Miguel. Conjure a path of shifting stone towards the dark location with the enemies for doing that. Okay, so this is a root. Oh, it's an AoE root. This is a, a worse mass root. Wait, it didn't work because they're elite, obviously. Yeah, this is a worse mass root. This seems pretty bad, honestly. I think. Worse? Oh yeah, 100% worse. Because, like it's a, it's a cone from you, right? So it's not instant. Like if someone stands here, and I cast it here, they literally can walk out of it. 
Yeah, Master's is obviously a talent, but yeah. Like, I mean, this is not a bad ability, it's just, uh... Like, I think you barely will ever press this button, ever. Except in PvP. Right? Like, it's, it's a PvP thing. Alright, so let's see. Um, send a flicker flame towards your target dealing fire damage to an enemy or healing an- Oh, it's a double spell. Okay. I like that. I think that's really smart. That's cute. It only has 25 yards range, so that's pretty bad, actually, for, for a heal, I think. Well, I mean, it's fine, but... It's not great, but it's only 25 yards. Then, mm, brings a dead party member back to life. Yeah, it's just a normal rest. I mean, there's... There were some things that were further range, right? Like, most things are 25 yards, but there were some things that were further. This Emerald Blossom is also only 25 yards, which also seems bad. I mean, obviously the breath is further range, or actually... Actually, this also might just be 25. The jump is further, right? But that's it, yeah. Yeah, this 25 range thing might be a bit weird. And so the, the thing about the 25 range thing is not that, like, I, I think it can totally work out fine. Um, but I do see a problem with it in a sense that... Are they going to have to design bosses around this all the time now? <laughs> like, because they will have to, right? Like, on, on a lot of bosses, they're going to have to be like, Oh, I have a great idea. Let's do this. And then they're like, oh, wait, but can Evoker do the ability then? You know, like, they're constantly gonna have to think about this when they decide a boss fight. Because right now, we have a clear distinction between melee and then ranged. And whenever they create an ability, they never have to think about someone that has shorter range, because everyone has long range. So from now on, they're gonna have to change the way they create boss fights, in a sense. Which, I'm sure they all manage, like, I'm sure they're gonna be fine. But I hope it doesn't create, like, worse boss fights because of it. I hope. They're more than likely just going to label them as melee. No, that would be horrible. They, that would be very bad if they do that. I don't think they should do that. That would be a, that would be a very big nerf to the whole spec. If they're just considered melee. Because <laughs> then they also get like melee spells and stuff on them, right? No, I don't think it's gonna be treated as melee. No, no, no. Like that would be really bad. Keep in mind, if some if, if a class is considered a melee, it takes away a melee slot, and then you're literally a melee. Like, it, there's also a lot of abilities that um, only target range or only target melee. So they they can't target evokers with melee spells. Like that would be awkward, because then they're not arranged. Thanks for the prime sub, um, Daragorn. Uh, sorry, that was the wrong name. Thank you so much for the prime sub, Asian style. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. I mean, we'll see. Ya. It might just be fine, right? Probably gonna be treated like Holy Pala, so melee this. Oh no, definitely not. No, guys, it won't be treated as melee. Like, that would make absolutely no sense. Because they're a ranged DPS. They, like, they can't treat a ranged DPS as a melee. 
Because Holy Pella is a melee, right? A Holy Paladin is considered a melee healer. So it's not the same. Yeah, I'm trying to think of situations where the range thing might be a problem. I mean, even on Halondras, it's going to be incredibly annoying. Right? Like, that's the first thing that I can think of where being mid-range would be incredibly annoying. Because, like, in the last phase, for example, you can't just, like, outrange the beam, so you constantly have to go in and out. Which sucks. <laughs> um, and especially as a healer on Halandris, because that room is huge. So you... I mean, I guess what you would do is you just walk with one melee camp and heal the melee, but... I mean, it's definitely a bit weird, I guess. Sludge Fist if you get chained. Yeah, Sludge Fist would also be a good example. I think on Sludge Fist, they would actually have to chain you to a melee. Right? Because if they chain you to a range... Then the range has to move in, which is weird, so... I don't know. Yeah, Sludge Fist would definitely be weird. Jailer, you would be forced into melee? Um... Yeah, kinda. If you have to force Sludge, you're gonna have to for other fights too. Well, no, because Sludge Fist is specifically... Like, Sludge Fist is a, a very unique fight where you chain to another partner. And it's one thing to move in and out as... Like, for yourself. But it's another thing if you force another person to walk in and out, right? I think Sludge Fist is very specific in that case. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, they're literally... They are gonna design the bosses knowing that Evoker exists, right? So they're not gonna create mechanics where it's gonna be weird. They're literally gonna create the whole expansion with this in mind, I guess. So, it shouldn't be a big deal. Well, anyway, um, so these were just only evoker spells right now. It is, it is somewhat interesting that they have, like, damage spells that are, like, cross spec. I, I guess a lot of classes have that too, that we already have, right? I guess so. Yeah. Most of them seem to be talents though, right? Okay, Devastation itself only has the passive. Um, this is the mastery, okay. So right now we only have the mastery and then we have to spec into talents, obviously. Uh, I, there was no interrupt as a baseline spell, no. Okay, see, so these are evoker spells and this is civilization spells. And by default, you only have landslide. That's it. That's interesting as well. Shaman specs uh, share multiple things too, like healing, search, wave. Aren't they? Aren't all of those talents though? No. Okay. Yeah, I think I think for druids, the only shared ability that every class has is wrath. I think. 
And maybe regrowth, actually. Regrowth and wrath, I think. I'm not sure, though. Now with the talents, a bit weird, right? Because uh, you don't really know anymore what's baseline and what isn't. <laughs> so anyway, let's look at this. Um, this integrate channel is 20% faster. This integrate is what? Oh, it's so slow, right? Okay. I think it's a bit annoying that this talent window is so huge and you cannot open up anything else while this is open. I mean, it says work in progress, but... But yeah, that's a bit annoying, right? Because I kind of want to open my spell book at the same time as opening the talents, but like, the talents literally the only thing you can open. <laughs> Unless there's another way. Is there another way? No. Okay, um. So let's see if the, like, because I'm sure there's um, some damage spells that you can have once. Time spiral. Bend time, allowing you and your allies to cast their major movement ability once in the next 10 seconds, even if it's on cooldown. Oh, okay, that's interesting. That is so specific. Because it. Like, it doesn't reset your cooldown, it just lets you cast it. Right? So it's still gonna go on cooldown afterwards, presumably. So if I have dash... And it's ready when they cast this... And then I press it, then it's gonna be in cooldown afterwards, right? You get it... You get to use it for free? Oh, so it's always just a free use. Okay, that's that makes more sense. Yeah, free use makes a lot more sense than you having to use it during that time and then still in cooldown. Like, that would be weird, right? Yeah, I think that makes uh, that makes more sense. Okay, that's pretty nice. The only problem with this... And I think the same issue also exists with the Hymn of Hope. Is that um, if you don't have add-ons, it's really hard to like understand that this is going on. Like you basically need a weak aura to tell you when someone is using the spell. It's really hard to understand. Like if you're not the the evoker yourself, or if you're not the priest, you know. And I I like those kind of abilities. I think they're nice, but I think there should be a better way. Um, for the UI or for something to show you that this is going on. Divine him, I mean, yeah. Like, Bloodlust, for example, it's pretty obvious when someone presses Bloodlust, right? Like, it's like a huge, like, you become bigger and it's like a big animation or whatever. Um, but something like uh, Divine him and maybe also Dispel is, um, yeah, the ability lights up, but, like, I'm not sure if that's good enough, you know? <laughs> and ability lighting up is like, yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's fine enough, I guess. Then what's this? Can you an updraft to lift your party members within 25 yards into the air? Excuse me? Reducing damage taken from area of effect attacks by 20%. Increasing movement speed by 30%. 8 seconds. Ugh. I don't think I like that. Like, I, I, I like it as in it's really good. Like, this spell is really good. The problem is... I hate it. I hate DR. Like, like any sort of DR spell. Because it just always ends up being really OP in certain situations and creates problems with boss design. <laughs> Oh, it is party members. Okay, that that's not too bad then, I guess. So it's not a raid-wide DR. It's only a party member DR. 
Which is definitely like that's that's better because then you cannot like cheese a mechanic as a raid. You, you basically just put the, the squishiest classes into their group and then they use it so you don't die, I guess. Well, that's nice. Yeah, as long as it's not raid wide, it's fine, I think. Yeah, you can cheese it by bringing four drag fear and then you have it on the whole group and the whole raid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, don't, I don't like abilities that allow you to cheese things. Because it just always ends up being a problem. But anyway. People have stunned enemies for three seconds. Okay, cool. Then like cooldown is reduced by 30 and is can withstand to an episode damage. Okay. Uh, essence regenerate. Okay. Where does it explain essences? Nowhere? Like, is there no explanation? How they work? Anywhere? Because I, I see that things cost essences, and I see that I have them. But nowhere does it explain how it works. Unless I missed it. Regions passively. Yeah, they should definitely explain this somewhere, no? Never played a DK. Listen, like... <laughs> I'm not saying that I don't understand how essences work. I'm saying that they should describe it somewhere in the game so people can read how it works. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's an incredibly hard concept to understand. <laughs> But whenever you play a class or first time or whatever, there should be like some sort of like explanation or a tooltip or something, right? Uh, I think it should be written here somewhere. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> right? Like I think here, under spec, it should be like have a thing where it says essences or whatever. Be Unless preservation also has it. Does preservation also have essences, or is that some? Do they have something else? Let me check, I guess. Okay, it still, it still looks like I have it. <laughs> so maybe... Uh, hmm. They could just put it into the general tab, I guess. <laughs> yeah, maybe reload. <laughs> I think they could explain it under evoker here. Just like as a passive thing. Where it says like essences, and then it like explains how it works. We're giving feedback. <laughs> How do you write essence? Oh my god. You actually write like this. under here but but because it works for devastation and preservation it would be weird to put it here because then they would have to put it on both sides i guess <laughs> i guess the problem with the essences is that you don't um well actually you do baseline have abilities cost essences right or yeah like this ability is a baseline ability and it costs three essences so it would make a lot of sense to explain it, right? I think. Hey, Strick, thank you so much for 13 subs. What the hell? Thank you so much. How are you doing, Strick? And thank you so much for Prime sub, Elwin, as well. Welcome. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> 900 gift subs. Wait, do you have 900 now? Oh shit. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congrats on the 900 uh, sub 
batch. Hello, Wait, do you actually get us a batch of 900? I hope you do. I hope you do. Nice chicken. GG's. Thank you, thank you. But anyway, I'm moving on. So yeah, the essences, I guess, just uh, regenerate over time. Yeah, let's let's take a look at them. So cost three. And now that it regenerates. Yeah, it also doesn't say how long it takes to regenerate one. And yeah, this should definitely be like be explained more specifically somewhere. Like how long it takes to regenerate one and so on. Hello new friend. Welcome. Alright, uh let's keep looking at talents. Okay, so this makes um, the slow channel faster. This makes um, the root be better. This makes essences be generated 50% fast, uh, five percent faster. Uh, then, and it looks like it looks like uh, wait. Uh... So it looks like the left is more utility, middle is more tankiness, and right is more healing? This is Dispel. So they have a Poison Dispel. They have a... Uh, Druid Caster from Wild Charge. With a heal. Living Flame deals starts with more damage and healing. Okay. Enforce your scales, increasing your armor by 200% and reducing magic damage taking by 200% less half seconds. Hmm. Somewhat of a weak cooldown, I think. Because it's so long. That's basically bark skin. On a 2.5 minute cooldown, right? Kinda weak. Damaging blue spells reduce the target's movement speed, but... I mean, it's not weak in itself, it's just a long cooldown, I think. Like, two and a half minutes. That's like, almost as much as Unending Resolve, and that one is a 40% DR. <laughs> so I think that uh, the defense is a bit weak-ish. Then your damaging blue spells reduce the target's movement speed of 50 for 3 seconds. Okay. Huh, this seems really high up. I guess it depends how many blue spells you have. But this is almost like a perma slow, right? If you skill this. And 50% is a big slow as well. Oh, so now there's a reduction. So it's like one and a half minutes now. So it's two and a half. That makes it a lot better. Then... Okay, these are... Both of these are boring, but... I, don't, I obviously don't know how the class works, so I don't know if you need essence generation or not. I don't know if you press the spell ever, so... <laughs> I'm just gonna spec random stuff now. Then Clovering is sweet. Tail swipe cooldowns reduced by 45 seconds. And wing buff is cooldowns reduced... Okay, so this is utility. I, I don't think this is very useful, but... I think the spot of it is nice. Because you can get to this utility from from all of the sides. But you also don't need it for anything. So this is a really good spot to put this spell in, I think. Because, uh, yeah, it's utility, so you don't really need this as a default thing. But you can get it, no matter where, which line you go. So that's nice. Um, then you may receive a uh, reactivate deep breath within three seconds after lang landing to travel back in time to here to take a look. Oh, I think that is really cool. But I wonder if it's an instant teleporter or not. Let me try that. It's a global. Okay. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, I think that's nice. Why not? I like it. It does suck a bit that it's a global if you have to use it. Like, because imagine, like, I think there's a lot of boss fights that require positioning requirements. And if you always have to press a second global to get back to your initial location, it might not even be worth it to, to press the spell at all, right? Then may maybe... Maybe it's a bit messed up. I mean, it's obviously gonna be worth it on AoE, right? But I mean more on, like, single target. Right? Because if you... Like, let's say you do Anduin or something... Okay, Anduin is a bad example. <laughs> Let me find a better example. Like on Skolex. If you do Skolex, if you would use the spell, it's fine, you can use it, but you would have to come back afterwards to range camp, right? And I'm not sure if that's worth it if, if the com coming back is an actual GCD. If it wouldn't be a GCD, then it makes sense, but with it being a GCD, it's a bit weird. And that's why I'm not sure if it's worth to even, like, skill it. Because you would only ever skill this if there's positioning requirements, right? Because otherwise you just stand in a different spot afterwards and it's fine. So yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Then, um, your stamina is increased by 2%, 4%, okay. Well, above 75%, your movement is increased by 10%. Oh, that's cute. I like that. Fire breath, uh, instant damage is increased by 10%, sure. Interrupt an enemy. Oh, that's uh, interrupt. 25 yards range. Fuck, that sucks. Oh, it's a silence. Ugh. It's, it's Shadow Priest interrupt. On a 25 yards range. <laughs> you had such a bad interrupt. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, that's actually just such a bad interrupt. Oof. That might actually be the worst interrupt. Unless you can make it better? Like, this is literally the worst interrupt in the game, right? It's funny with DPS sound, but I am DPS. I am DPS. Is it, oh, you can reduce this here. Oh, I see you. Ah, okay. Well, that's something, I guess. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I see now. Yeah, if you couldn't reduce that, then that would be really bad. <laughs> but if it's 20 seconds cooldown, then it's, it's a lot better, yeah, for sure. Okay, interesting. <laughs> right, then. Successfully interrupting gives one essence. That's probably not something you take. At least not in PvE. Then you definitely want this 4% damage increase, obviously. Fire breath instant damage increased. Uh, well above. Okay, this is the movement speed. Um, then. Compress time to make your next empowered spell cast instantly. Um, ooh, that's. That's a really good damage CD, I guess. Have it last 2 seconds longer. That's really. Ooh, you can make it last 4 seconds longer! Okay, that's really good. So now you can cast 10 seconds. You can cast while moving 10 seconds out of 30 seconds. So you have a 20 seconds downtime, 10 seconds uptime. That, that, that is very, very nice. That's a lot of um, mobility as, as a caster. I guess you also need it because you have such short range, but yeah. 4% damage, re uh, magic damage reduction. Redirect your access magic to a friendly healer. Your access magic? Wait, what? Your access magic? What? What is access magic? Is that just like a... Oh, okay, so... The explanation is the second part. Ah, okay. I thought there would be like two parts of this. Okay. Okay, I get it. Yeah. I, I thought there's two parts and the first thing is like something. But I guess it's just like RP text or whatever. 
When you cast an empowered spell, you restore to 0.5% of your maximum mana per empowered level. Limit one. Okay. I mean, it seems nice. I don't know how many times you cast an empower spell, right? But um, seems nice ish. Let out a bone shaking roar at enemies in a cone in front of you, increasing the duration of crowd controls that affect them by 50% in the next 10 seconds. Ooh, that's such an annoying PvP talent! <laughs> what? That's so annoying! Well, in PvE, I don't think you'd ever need this, but... Well, actually, maybe. It sounds like another cheese talent again. You could maybe cheese something with this in PvE, possibly. Um, then, a Sir Strike damage one additional enemy? Okay. Standard enemies protective magic, dealing spell frost damage to absorb shields. You know what? So this is basically a damage spell that only does damage to absorb nothing else. Okay. I don't know if 6.1k is a lot of damage. I guess there's a lot of damage. You compare it to other stuff? Living frame Living Flame does 2.4k and it has a cast time, so. Yeah, I guess this is a this is nice. Hmm. Firebreath causes your next living flame to strike one additional target per power level. Okay. Oh, fire breath. So you just like fire breath, living flame. It's like a combo if you take this for AoE. And fire breath stuns enemies for three seconds. It's actually really good. It's like an AoE stun for and plus basically every 30 seconds. Pretty nice. Except, except that you want to, like you don't want to hold it. Oh, it's deep breath. Oh, this was fire breath, and this is deep breath. Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay, well, that's whatever. A three second stun on a spell that you don't want to hold is weird. Yeah, I don't think I like this spell. Or this talent being all the way down here. Because the stun itself is nice because it's such a huge range, right? But when when do you ever need such a huge range? Like, that's the thing, right? I, I think it's it's this spell here. Deep breath. I think this suffers from the same issue as Starfall does, in a sense. Like... Because it's such a big... Like... Line. But wh when do you ever need such a big line? For anything. Right? Either, like in PvE, I mean. You never... Ever. Like, because all... Like, things are always gonna be stacked, right? There, there's no way, no way you're gonna have ads that are like spread out in a line. Like that's just not, like this doesn't happen, right? And that's why the stun itself is also kind of useless. Because it's such a long cooldown and it's a three second stun. Like, I mean, I don't know, it's a bit whatever-ish. <laughs> it's nice, but like it's okay. I don't think it's horrible. But I think it's a bit weird that it's all the way down here. Because the power of this talent is pretty... Limited, I think. Like, this seems pretty weak. For it to be all the way down here. Especially when the other things are much better. But, good for PvP. I doubt it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad for PvP. I'm sure it's nice. But, like... Like, how nice is this? Especially because... <laughs> Like, this spell is... Like, you can just walk out of it, you know? Like, you can literally dodge this, right? You can move out of it. 
<laughs> it's like, I don't know. No, I'm not saying the spell is bad. I think this, like, I'm not saying the spell itself is bad. I think the spell is fine. I'm just saying that this talent is not warranting its position, is what I'm basically trying to say. Like, I don't think this talent is so good that it should be all the way down here uh, in comparison to these two. You know, it's like a bit... Eh. But anyway, it's not that big of a deal, I guess. You just don't skill it, whatever. <laughs> then... I mean, maybe there's like very niche uses for it sometimes. I'm sure there might be some bosses where it's kind of nice or something. Okay, Dan, let's see you. I didn't really look at the healing side just yet. Hover against one. What? Okay, that's OP. So now you can cast while moving for 20 seconds straight. That's kind of insane. And then you can use Time Spiral. Wait, what's the cooldown on Hover? With my buff. Where's Hover? Oh my god, where's it there? Oh, it's 30 seconds cooldown with this buff. Oh, so what is it without it? Oh, 35, okay. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Alright, yeah, you can even cast 30 seconds. In fact, 40. You could cast while moving 40 seconds straight. Last six on ten. It lasts ten with this talent. So, so basically, you can cast while moving ten seconds when you use hover, has a thirty seconds cooldown. With the second charge, you can cast twenty seconds. And when you use time spiral, you can yet cast thirty seconds, and then it's ready again, and then you would be casting forty seconds, right? So you will be able to cast while moving for 40 seconds straight, technically, if you would want to. But of course you cannot cast empower abilities while moving, so... Oppressing Roar... Removes one enrage effect from each enemy, and its cooldown is reduced by 20 seconds for each enrage. Oh, an AoE enrage dispel for M+. This is incredibly specific and really useless anywhere outside of M+, right? <laughs> like, this is like a very, very specific M+, thing, and only for raging as well. It's really nice to have for raging, I guess. In fact, it might actually be really OP for raging. Like, literally, like, they, they literally might have to, like, reconsider this. For raging because it's basically a perma aoe dispel right because at 20 seconds for cooldown reduction for each enrage dispelled like that's a lot of seconds <laughs> i think you would be able to just permanently aoe dispel everything i think it might be slightly op for raging well i, I guess you could also think about like what do you need to dispel raging I mean, not really, right? You can totally play without having a dispel. But then it is really nice if you constantly can AoE dispel it. Thank you so much for gifting us up, Anonymous. Thank you so, so much. Welcome to Death. Appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome back. It doesn't say that it maxes out on any sort of enemies, though, right? It says... Let out a bone-shaking roar at enemies in a cone in front of you. It doesn't say, like, max 5 or something. It seems to be, like, an unlimited thing. 
and then gets reduced by 20 seconds for each enrage you dispel. And then in Plast you do pools of like six, seven, eight mops or whatever. So, I don't know, it seems pretty good. And you also have to consider that even if it only reduces the cooldown to a minute, that's still basically a perma dispel because you just like you pull a trash group, you get them into enrage, you dispel them, and then it's gonna take another like minute to pull the next trash group and get them into enrage again, right? So even if it's just a minute cooldown, it would still be like a perma dispel basically on high keys. Because in high keys, it takes you approximately a minute to pull the next trash group and get them into enrage as well, right? So it doesn't even have to be like a zero second cooldown. It could literally just be a minute and it would be still permanent, basically. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's read some of the right side talents here. So this is like rescue. I like this spell, it's kind of cute. I think you would. I think you go with the spell as a damage dealer as well, right? Like it's just a movement thing. Because as far as I could see, there was no other movement spell other than like moving faster. Like there was like a blink or something. Well, there was a blink actually. Um, recall, is is a blink. In fact, I think recall. If this is the only like blink that this class has. Then they are probably going to use the spell for mobility a lot. Like, uh, for example... You can use it as somewhat of like an altar time. Um, for... to get over rings on... Uh, like on Zymox, to get over rings on um, the Sausage. To get uh, through beams on Halandris, like stuff like that, you know? Technically, yeah. Or... Uh, to be able to get through the spikes. Actually, it's kind of hard to make it work, though. Because how does this work? There's a minimum range. Like, you have to... Okay, so let's say... Let's say I'm playing Painsmith. And the wave comes towards me. I can use my breath to decide. Then, like, move back. And now the spikes roll over this. Oh, it's only a short amount of time, too. It's not long, okay. Okay, it's it's a bit hard to make this. <laughs> it's only three seconds. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know if you can use this properly as a movement spell then to dodge things. I'm not sure. That's a bit hard to make it work that way. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> a bit hard to make it work. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. All right, then let's see. Start 20% of your effective healing up to... Your next damaging living flame consumes all sword healing to increase its damage dealt. Hmm. Yeah, that's nice, I guess. Just a damage spell for the healers. Yeah. So, passive damage increase. Well, it's not actually passive. You kind of do want to track this as well as a healer. Like, if you want to maximize your damage, you kind of want to track how much. Um, it's stored, and then use Living Flame once it's maxed so you don't waste anything. Then Cauterize and Allies Wounds, removing all bleed poise Bleeds? Wait, this isn't- this is just like a- what? Wait, that's really broken. That's- that's really broken. And you can go with this as a damage dealer? Oh my god, that's insane. What? You can just... You can just remove Necrotic off the tank? Okay, that's just kind of OP, yeah. I think this is a bit broken. <laughs> I think this might be a bit broken. It's a minute cooldown, but still. That's pretty OP, I don't know about that. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Brody, yeah? 
This guy doesn't understand how great Nagany is. And it's getting annoying, honestly. Yeah? Stop being toxic, Raddy. You have to embrace Nagany, okay? I mean, a 25 yards range doesn't really matter, because all of your spells are 25 yards range, so... <laughs> Seems really good to have in raids. I don't think this is good for raids. No, no, no. I don't think this is good for raids. I think... I mean, unless there's a boss that's a bleed effect, right? At that point, it is really good for raids. <laughs> but... With this in mind, they just cannot create a boss fight where there are bleed effects that are important. Or they make this ability not work on certain bleeds, right? Because you can do that. Because uh, if you guys remember, the Dwarf Facial, for example, doesn't work on every single bleed. And same goes with the Kirin Vial. It doesn't work on every single bleed that exists in the game. And I think they can just do that. Like, if there's a boss fight where bleeds are incredibly important and part of the fight, then they just make this not work. Or they just make the bleeds not be an important part of the fight. <laughs> Because yeah, otherwise this would be really broken. If you think like a, uh, think of a fight like, um... let me try to think of any fights that had bleeds as like a core mechanic. Um... Okay, help me out. I know that uh, Stone Legion generals had bleeds, but it wasn't as. Yeah, Stone Legion generals had the bleeds, but I don't think that ability would have been that OP in that fight, because you could clear them anyway. With, um, the circle. I mean, it would have been nice, I guess, to have this. And I think... I think this ability might even be underestimated. Um, because... Right now in, um, Shadowlands, we actually have a decent amount of abilities to remove bleeds. Because we have the Kyrian Vial, um, that a lot of classes can go for. And I think in Dragonflight, we're going to lose the Kyrian Vial, right? So this even increases this spell's value, because it's going to be even less common to be able to remove bleeds. The only one, the only way to remove bleeds in Dragonflight is gonna be Dwarf Rachel, right? And Dispel. Unless there's other classes who get a similar talent. Wait, I think here in Vile actually did work on SLG. And Bob, I guess, yeah. I, I think it, it worked race. At least it worked at the start. I'm not sure if they ever removed it. But Kirin Val definitely worked at some point. Maybe it worked on Heroic. Yeah, maybe it only worked on Heroic. Or maybe it only it worked during testing, possibly. Maybe. Okay, let's see. In capacitate an enemy for 20 seconds causing them to sleepwalk towards you <laughs> okay huh I mean that's interesting I like that <laughs> all right then your healing that increase uh-huh more blossom heals two additional allies then the flames of life surround you for eight seconds healing you over 40 seconds for 100 of damage taken Oh. Well, that's really nice. Renewing blaze cooldown is reduced by 30 seconds. While renewing blaze, initial effect is activated. Receive damage increased healing from all sources. Some healing increase or cooldown reduction. I mean, that's like uh, whatever, like whatever works. Then can do an updraft to lift your party. Oh yeah, this is the thing with yeah, yeah. This is really nice. Green spells restores five percent more health. Okay. 
You and your ally are protected from harm, absorbing damage equal to 30% of your maximum health for 5 seconds. Alright. No, wait, what? Swoop to an ally and fly with them to target location. Wait, what? Excuse me? Oh, you have to be in a party with them, I guess. It's not a teleport, though. It's a fly thing. Oh, that's interesting. How far is this? I know. Do you have to be close? Like, how does this work? Huh? Do I have to be in a group for this? I oh, need to be in a group, okay. Okay, let's test this. Okay. <laughs> Wait, that is so nice! <laughs> What's the cool out of this? Oh, one minute. Dude, that is so toxic though! Oh my god! People are gonna like kill each other all the time, right? <laughs> how, what's the range in this too? Like how far can it be away to pick him up? I think like this is also... Like is this useful? I'm not sure if this is useful. Like, I would be fucking annoyed if someone picks me up. It would- I mean, it would be like- like, if- for a grip, it works for a grip, I guess. What if I put this here? Oh, it's actually really far. <laughs> I just keep moving Laffy around. <laughs> oh, you can even jump up places as well. You can go higher up. Okay, that's nice. Huh. Max is getting excited for this. Well, I'm, I'm trying to think what this is useful for, and I can't really think of that many things, honestly. Like, it's probably nice for just movement speed. So if you have to go from like one part of the room to the other part of the room, you can pick up a, a class that's really slow and move them quicker. But usually that doesn't really happen. Like usually you don't have to move from one side to the other without being able to attack something on the way. Because usually if you have to walk from one side to the other, you are attacking as you walk. And then it kind of is annoying if someone picks you up because you can't attack while being picked up. <laughs> I think it could be very similar to like uh, a pre-script because like to just save somebody yeah I, I guess I can see it being like a very similar thing to a pre-script it's worse than a pre-script though because it takes longer to execute um, but other than that, like, I don't, yeah, other than that, I don't think there's many uses for this, because it would be different if it was a blink, but it's, it's a, it's not a blink, right? This would be incredibly useful if it was a blink, right? Because then you could help, like, you could go through, like, um, like a wall or something, or through something that kills you, but it's not a, it's not a, 
blink, so... Yeah, you can move, like it's, you can move, you can help your tank kiting, so it's exactly the same as a prescript when you think about the usages of it, right? I can't think of anything outside of a prescript, um, I think. Can I pick Lapi up from here? Put him all the way up here? Okay, <laughs> what? Okay, that just bugged out now. The ability worked, but it didn't do anything. It broke it, yeah. <laughs> Feels bad. <laughs> no, when it was LOS, it said that it was LOS. I think it's better in Prescript because you're able to relocate yourself and someone else to a better position. It will, like, yes and no, I think, because the bad part about this spell is that you cannot use it by yourself, right? And I think, or, or can you? Like, so what if you are in a bad spot? And no one else is in a bad spot. Then you like have to grieve somebody to save yourself. You know what I mean? Which can be really annoying. So let's say I I'm standing in this shit here. And it's gonna kill me. And Lappy over there is just fine. But I need to get out. So I target Lappy to... to, to move out, but then I grip him. And it annoys him, right? To save myself, which can be annoying, I guess. <laughs> yeah, then... Uh... The thing with the shield, I think this is useless, though. Well, not not completely useless, but this spell basically just puts a shield on me and the person that I picked up, and you're never gonna be able to make use of this. Ever. I mean, I know it's a big shield, but you have to literally interrupt the person's cast. Like, it's a damage loss. Like, you have to interrupt the person. Like, when you pick someone up, it... They, their caskets and dropped it. <laughs> right? Like, uh, who the... F like, why would you wanna... Also, you just wasted your movement ability. That's, I mean, of course it interrupts your cast. Like, uh, I'm very heavily assuming it does. I very highly doubt... Why would it not interrupt your cast? Like, I think that would be really weird. Wait, it does to interrupt your cast? <laughs> I mean, it does and then it's really nice. Now, but even if it doesn't, because... I can basically just talk about this interaction here, right? Um... Because it's a, it's a one minute cooldown, it's a 30% shield on two people... And... You lose your movement ability as well. So it's like I don't, and the shield only lasts for five seconds as well. So I can see it being good for PvP, maybe. I think actually it's really good for PvP. Yeah, like if you play three v three arena or whatever, and you can pick a person up and move them away when they are being focused, and then you have a thirty percent shield on them. Like that's really good, right? But for PvE, for raiding, it's like me. I think. Then, uh, let's see. Him. I think we read all the spells now.
Oh shit, I have a meeting in half an hour. Fuck. <laughs> okay, wait, bear back one second, guys. And now we're gonna look at the devastation talents. But um I think the the evoker tree looks really nice. I think there's definitely some like OP stuff in it and some like really nice stuff. I think uh this is really OP, the dispel. I think the hover, like the time spiral plus extended uh, hover and uh, reduced cooldown, that, that all of that is really good. This of course also really good, the damage reduction. This is really bad. <laughs> this spell is horrible in comparison to those two. Um, yeah, AoE enrage the spell, really nice. Mana as well, like there's a lot of really cool stuff in this. But yeah, one second guys, bear back.
Eins. Let's look at the uh, Devastation Trio. Okay, so this is, uh... Flame dealing fire damage to target the nearby enemies. Apply just as cleave by defaults, okay. Um, your living flame is turned into cost an essence burst, making your next disintegrate. Pyre or charge blast cost no essence. Okay, that's cool. Let's try to do an essence burst. Make, okay, same thing for Asir Strike and Living Flame. Okay. Huh? Ten percent more damage. Twenty percent more damage. Okay. Okay, they already have like a lot of AOE here. Maybe it's like left AOE and uh, right single target or something. Oh, this is like red spells. Okay, I wrap it. Okay, okay, and excel. Oh. Oh. No. Yeah. So for 14 seconds, you can just spam the spells. That's pretty good. Dragon Rage, let's, what's Dragon Rage? Oh, oh! For 20 seconds you can just spam spells. Fire spells reach maximum level 20 minutes less time. Fire spells increase your essence regeneration rate by 50% last 22 seconds. From power spell. Okay. Flaming Flame deals towards increased damage and healing, but its cast is decreased. Flame deals damage for 12 seconds enemies. So sorry, I'll have to Alice or don't. Okay. Explosion reverse target area with uh, white hot cinders, dealing fire damage to enemies over 12 seconds. Okay, AoE dot. What's the range of this? Okay, so it's pretty small, but that's fine. Yeah, that's a pretty cool animation. That looks neat. The range is a bit bigger than it looks like as well, because it hit these two targets as well. Thanks for eight months, uh, Erwa. I appreciate that. Good evening, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, and power spells maximum levels increase by one. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, I have six essences, okay. A lot of this seems to be like generate essence generation stuff. The main flame has a twelve percent chance to reset the cooldown of firestorm. Hey, where's Living Flame? It's that again? Oh, it's the normal cast, okay. We said to call that a Firestorm. What's Firestorm? Oh, this. Okay. And this reduces, um, okay. Fire Breath reduce the cast time of Living Flame by 4% for 4 seconds. Pyre and Living Flame extend the duration of your Fire Breath damage over time by 1 second. Yeah, I'm sure that's nice. Fire Breath deals 7% more damage over time. During Deep Breath and Dragon Rage, you gain the maximum benefit of Mastery regards on Tori's health. Oh, okay. Yeah, so just like, uh... Yeah, okay. 
Fire Breath and Eternity Search. What's Eternity Search? Salva of pure magic, dealing spell percentage to enemy income. And then this is fire breath and turning to reduce the remaining cooldown of deep breath and dragon rage by one second current power level. Okay. That's not a lot, I guess. So it's three seconds for a full, or four seconds to increase it. So I guess not that big. Thank you so much for 16 months, Nicole. What's up? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you so much for giving a tier two set to Megs. I appreciate that, Anonymous. Thank you so much. Is Megs here? And see her. Thank you very, very much. Oh, that's two ranks. Oh, I see. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for one year, just a guy. What's up? Hello, hello. Um, Evergreen Flame is under two. Due to extension, isn't long enough compared to the cast time of the Living Flame spell. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, get rid of this so we can check the other stuff. Oh, so blue is more single target and red spells are more AoE. Yeah. Sense abilities reduce the remaining cooldown of turn research for one second. Turn research critical strike grants you essence first. Okay. Set a bolt of concentrated power from your mouth for spell first damage. Just try increase the dimension of charge blast by another four account. Charge blast is around chance into the next seven spell cooldown. Charge blast deals strong surge to enemies account. Finity surge and answer strike hit twice as many targets. Okay. 10% damage increase for four seconds. Disintegrate has such an Disintegrate is uh, the slow, right? I think. Disintegrate to each time it deals damage across the level one eternally search at your target. Oh. fun. I obviously don't know exactly how the playstyle would look like in the end. I like the way the name, the, the cast bar under the nameplates look like. They changed this as well. This looks better. I think the icon is a bit off though, right? Like the icon is a bit below, the Casper is a bit on the top, like this looks a bit weird. It's off center, right? It's bothering me. <laughs> Slightly off center. I don't like it. Alright, well that class looks good. Big fan. Also, all the animations look really nice.
cool. Sore? What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the flying thing. Yeah, it looks pretty cute. Yeah, the flying part is really, really nice. Like, this dragon flying is really amazing. That was like a great idea. Oh shit, I accidentally landed. I didn't want to. <laughs> Thank you so much for Prime Sub, Maglacard. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. I really hope that they will delete or greatly reduce the city from Soar. It really feels so good. Um. Well, I think the reason why it is such a long cooldown is because you can use it outside of the zones where you're technically able to use it, right? So basically, um, the way this works... Like, this is called dragon riding, and every class can do this, not just evokers, but you need a mount for it, like a special mount. And then you will be able to do the same thing, uh, but only in the zones, like in the dragonfly, uh, dragonflight zones. Um, but Evoker can do it outside of Dragonflight's flight zones with this cooldown here, with this uh, five minute cooldown. And I think that's why it has a five minute cooldown, because you can use it in zones that are not dedicated for it. I think so, at least. Because when you're in a zone where you can do dragon flying or dragon riding, then you're gonna just be able to use your mount anyway, right? So this is more of a like additional like cool thing that um, Evoker has. Yeah, I don't think so. You cannot use the the dragon flying mounts outside of the dragon flight areas. See, this one, for example, would be a mount like that, and just you're in the wrong zone. So no, it does not work. Uh, you can just play Night Fae uh, as Moonkin right now, cost if you want to. Night Fae is pretty good. You can also play Venthyr. Make the empowered spells be affected by haste. Oh, so the empowered spells don't scale with haste right now? Hmm. Huh, that's interesting. I guess they thought it would be too OP if it scales with it. Isn't Venthyr better? I mean... You asked what you should play, right? And I said you can play Night Fear event there. So you can just play whatever you want. If you think Venthyr is better, then you can play Venthyr. But if you like if you think Venthyr is best, just play Venthyr, yeah? But you don't have to play Venthyr. You can play Night Fear. <laughs> whatever your heart desires. They need a reason for you to take this rejection? Well... Uh, I think it it does make sense that maybe the Empower spell does not scale with Haste. Because otherwise Haste might have too much value. You know what I mean? Because you have to think about... How valuable your stats are. For a certain class. Because if a certain stat is too valuable then that class will only go with that stat and never go with anything else, kind of. So that's why... Because Haze already has like a lot of things that it scales with, right? Haze scales with cast speed and like dot ticks on the target as well. So you already have multiple things that it scales with. And it usually also scales with generation as well. I'm not sure if essence generation is affected by Haze right now. But I can imagine it is. And then if the empower thing also scales with haste, then it like you have like three or four things that um, haste scales with, which might make the, the step two up here. Yeah. 
If those spells, if those spells don't scale with haste and aren't affected by hover, it is, it just makes the class clunky. I, I mean, I don't agree. Why? I don't think I agree. I don't think it's clunky that you have to just channel your empower spells. Like that's just a core mechanic that you have to stand still for. I think that's totally fine, right? If you think, if you compare it to other classes, there's a lot of classes that have to stand still to cast something. And for Evoker, it's only the empowered spells. For everything else, you can basically use Hover. And they just wanted to make they, like it's it's basically just less OP. Like if you could cast every single spell with Hover, then you would be a BM Hunter, right? And that's obviously broken. So, and also boring, I think. So having empower spells that are just like the only thing that you have to stand still for is fine. I don't think that makes it clunky at all. And the fact that it doesn't get affected by haste um, can be weird in some situations. Like for example, during Bloodlust, right? Like if Bloodlust is running and your empower is not being um, sped up by it, then that probably feels a bit weird. And I guess additionally there's also like if there's any sort of haste buffs, right? If you play with a trinket that has a haste proc, then it will be weird to cast empower during the proc. Um, but then again, maybe you just don't play hit trinkets with haste procs, right? <laughs> or you just don't cast empower during it. Yeah, exactly. There's also spells that make your empower cast instant. So you can play around it a little bit, right? If you have a lot of haste, um, you can just make sure you use your spell that makes your empower instant instead of channeling it. But yeah, I think there needs to be some restriction to the empower thing. Because this class is so mobile. Like, it's so incredibly mobile that I think there has to be some sort of, some form of, um, like, something that holds you back. Something that, um, makes you have to, like, channel or, like, stand still and do it or whatever. I mean, I also know that you have 25 yards range, but the 25 yards range is not always, like, a bad thing. Like, sometimes it's completely irrelevant, right? Uh, there's definitely some situations where the fact that you don't have... 40 yards range can be annoying, but then on the other hand, there's also situations where it's completely irrelevant, right? Let's bait the AoE. Yeah, th there are some situations where, um, well, I mean, but sometimes you have to bait an AoE, but I mean, think about b bosses where you really had to do that, where it would be really bad. Like the last, the like, bosses in Sepulchre, for example, where you had to bait was um, like Lords of Dread. But Lords of Dread. You can easily play around it by just baiting in a melee position as an evoker where you're not like 40 yards away, right? So I don't I think on Lords it wouldn't be a big deal. You just bait like in like you just make sure that you're as close to the boss as possible and then still bait to the left, in a sense, right? So you're still in range. Um and outside of that, Jailer... I mean, what do you bait on Jailer? I, I guess Defile? But Defile also doesn't need to be baited 40 yards away. You can bait Defile really close and you're still fine. Right? So it's not an issue there either. Yeah, and Decimator as well. I think Decimator you don't have to bait 40 yards away either, right? Oh, 
On Lords, you'd essentially be a melee getting range mechanics. Natural, but definitely not seamless. I don't agree. Like, uh, on Lords of Dreads, the only thing that you would have to be away for, for, like, you can totally play as a ranged, you just bait in the melee spot, right? Because you can stand outside with a green circle. Um, that's totally fine. Like, you don't have to give it to someone else. You can you can just stay out with it. And then cleansing with the fear is also fine, right? The only time where it can be slightly annoying is when you bait the sleeping zones. But you just bait them where the melee walk. So I don't think it will be that big of a... In fact, I would even say it's, it's, it's probably easier to play Evoker on that boss. Because... People are gonna give you space. Like the way Lords of Dread would work is that people are gonna say, oh, range, make sure you go far away so the evokers have space in front of you. <laughs> and then there's the melee. So you have like range camp, evokers, melee, right? And you probably have like an easy time walking around there because uh, there's only evokers there. Yeah. Except there's no Lords of Dread fight when evoker comes out. Well, obviously there's gonna be new fights, but that's the thing. Like, when, when Blizzard is going to design new fights, they know that Evoker exists. So they will not create situations where Evoker is going to have to walk 40 yards away to bait an ability, right? Like, that seems likely, that they're not going to do that. Right? So they're just going to play around it and make sure that it's not going to be annoying. Doesn't that contradict your argument about Evoker being considered a melee versus ranged earlier? In what sense? The fact that you bait in a melee spot? I mean, no. Because anyone can range... On Lords of Dread, every range could bait in a melee spot if they want to. Like, it's not a disadvantage to do so. Right? Like, if you're a Moonkin and you want to bait in a melee spot, then you can bait in a melee spot and you're... You don't have a disadvantage for doing so. It's just a different movement thing. But you obviously still consider a range because you still play the green circles as an evoker. Right? Because th the way melee play Lords of Dread is if they have a green circle, they give it to a ranged. Right? But if you're an evoker, you're not going to give it to someone else. Like if you had a green circle, you'd have the green circle. You just stand outside. So like you you played you played a fight just like a ranged DPS would, except you're just not gonna stand 40 yards away. You stand 20 20 yards away, and when you bait the sleep zones, you just move to the close spot instead of the far spot, which is the same thing. Like it's the same thing. You just move slightly differently. When the correct strat is to keep the sleep pool stacked tightly, it is. Yes, I played Sarah under that tier. But how... Like, I just don't understand why you think there's a difference if a uh, range walks into the melee spot. Because the melee are baiting the sleep zones as well. Right? And usually the melee don't walk 40 yards away. They just walk 15 yards away. 20 yards, right? So if the evoker walks into the melee spot there's no difference. Like, it's not... Like, like, literally any ranged player could walk into the melee spot to, to bait the sleep zones, and it would be fine. Right? Like, if a Moonkin wants to bait the sleeping zones in the melee spot, then that's fine. Because it doesn't matter if the sleeping zone is close or far. Like, it's the same thing for the boss fight, right? Like discussing demon hunter set drops in wrath dungeon no it's not at all like the reason why we are taking old fights as an example is because we obviously don't know what the dragon flight boss fights will look like but we do know that they're gonna be somewhat similar to all the fights we know in the past right <laughs> like whenever blizzard releases a raid here usually boss fights 
are somewhat comparable to other boss fights. They're not like the exact same thing, but all the mechanics are existed in some form before. Like, it's not that they come up with a completely, like, with a boss fight that has mechanics that we've literally never seen before in our lives, right? Like, there's bait mechanics, there's spread mechanics, there's uh, beams that kill you, there's swirlies that you have to walk out. Like, we have, in World of Warcraft, we have abilities that are the same, just different variations of them and different combinations of them on a boss fight. So, of course, we can look at Evoker and see how they would fare against certain mechanics that we've known from the past, because it's very likely that abilities like this are going to be there again in the future, right? It, it's, it's weird to assume that every boss fight in the future wouldn't have a single ability that is similar to what we had before, right? Like, that, that would be logical to assume that. Thanks for five months, Limbo. What's up? How are you? In the same way that they made mechanics that didn't make individual covenant abilities too powerful, why do you think they can't do that with Evoker? I never said they couldn't. I never said that they cannot... M like, I literally said that they will, in fact. I said that when they create boss fights in Dragonflight, they will keep in mind how Evoker works. Like, I, they will obviously do that. But they are definitely boss fights where Covenant abilities were really good, yeah? Like, they didn't do a great job making Covenant abilities <laughs> uh, not OP in certain fights. In fact, I would say that there were a lot of boss fights where certain Covenant abilities were much better than others. Like, Door of Shadows and, um, and the Blink from Night Fae was really good in some situations. But anyway, what, what I'm saying is that I think that... Because um, we had this whole discussion earlier where people were saying that Evoker would be considered a melee. And I'm just saying that that makes no sense. <laughs> because uh, why... Because then you could just make it a melee, right? Because if you have a class that has 25 yards range, you can either say, okay, this is a range DPS class or it's a melee DPS class, right? Because right now we don't have anything that has 25 yards. You have the best explanations on Twitch. Thanks <laughs> for working through all of our questions. <laughs> Thank you so much for your nation, Anonymous. Appreciate that. And yeah, don't worry about it. I like talking about this stuff, so... <laughs> I'm enjoying this very much. But I'm gonna have to leave soon. But yeah, it, it, since we have this like completely new range, like there's not a single class that only has 25 yards, right? Um, they could They could have technically just said, okay, it's a melee DPS. But clearly, we have we have so many melee DPS already compared to ranged that um, it makes sense for them to not make another melee spec. So I uh, I'm assuming that on all of the boss fights from now on that they're going to be creating, that Evoker is going to be able to have a ranged spot and not take up a melee spot. Because otherwise, if Evoker would take up a melee spot, that would be horrible design by them. Because right now, we have a very big issue with having too many melee specs. Like, there's way too many melee specs in a game. In comparison to the amount of melee spots we have in a raid. And ranged are a lot different, right? Like, we have a lot more ranged spots for the amount of ranged specs that we have in a game. So they specifically created a ranged class because we don't have space for a melee class. So it would completely defeat that purpose if they would say, oh, Evoker takes up a melee spot. Like, that would completely defeat the purpose of creating a ranged spec, right? So I'm sure they will consider that when they create boss fights. Sometimes there are mechanics that are um, very specific, like this mechanic only targets range, or this mechanic only targets healers, uh, and this mechanic only targets melee, right? And I think whenever a mechanic like this is gonna get introduced, they're gonna make sure that Evoker can deal with it as a ranged. Because otherwise, again, it just makes no sense to create a ranged spec.
It's entirely possible they don't get the range bait mechanics. Yeah, I don't think, like, I, I don't think so. I think whenever there is a ranged bait mechanic, they will just make sure that he can bait it at 25 yards and it's not going to be a big disadvantage. Because if if they would be at ranged bait mechanics and the evokers don't get targeted, then they're considered melee. And that creates the, the problem again. Anyway, guys, I'm going to have to leave. Shit, my meeting started a minute ago. Give me a second. Where's this meeting even happening? Is it Google Meet? Let me check. Did I get invited? Uh... <laughs> I just Google Meet. All right. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I uh, appreciate you very much. Tomorrow we'll look more at the uh, alpha stuff. We watch. We need to watch more videos as well from other people. We need to check out Druid Talents. We need to uh, check out more Evoker stuff. I didn't look at the new stone at all. Uh, like, there's so much stuff that we have to look at. So we'll, we'll do all that tomorrow. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Um, let's host. Let's host Robin. She's doing alpha stuff as well. And then I'll see you tomorrow, alright? Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice rest of your day. Enjoy. So when are the new stuff coming? Turn Max and post that? Well then, it's weird. Because I would post... No. Alright. Goodbye.